Good morning. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today for uh, this webinar. Um, my name is Alistair McGowan. I'm the Director of Government Relations for eBay in the UK. We're delighted you're able to join us for this, the first of two webinars aimed at helping local businesses uh, in the Sone area and beyond get online. Uh, this first webinar is for businesses that are new to selling online or at least uh, new to selling on eBay and are maybe looking to make the move into e-commerce. Uh, the second one next week uh, is for those uh, existing eBay sellers who are looking to grow their business uh, and maybe take it to the next level. I'm pleased to say that we have over 500 businesses who have registered uh, for these two webinars, which I think shows the real interest that there is uh, in online retail right now, um, especially given all the, the challenges uh, being faced by offline retail at the moment. Uh, Annie, if you could just maybe move to the agenda slide, um, you can see that we have a, a very busy schedule today. We've got lots of great content uh, to get through. Don't worry, we've also scheduled uh, lots of uh, breaks uh, during the session to allow you to catch your breath, uh, catch up on emails, or just make yourself a well-earned cup of tea, and I'll be availing myself of that. Uh, I should say also at this point that the content is being recorded, and we'll be looking to host it online later on our website, which is www.ebaymainstreet.com for those who want to review it later. And we'll follow up afterwards uh, via email with the, uh, the link once that video is, is live. Um, in a moment, I'll run through some of the logistics for today. But before that, uh, we are extremely fortunate uh, to be joined today uh, by two very special guests. Uh, firstly, Rob Patrell, our uh, Senior Vice President for eBay Europe. And Secondly, uh, local Gosport MP and Minister of State for Digital and Culture, uh, Caroline Dynage. We're delighted to have uh, both of you today and uh, to welcome you both. But first, uh, over to you, Rob, to kick us off. Uh, thank you very much, Alistair, and, um, and welcome everyone who's joining us uh, today and participating in this uh, presentation. I'd like to thank, uh, first of all, the Minister for taking time out of her very busy schedule to join us today. Look, I'm really grateful for the work she does day in, day out um, to promote the tech sector and e-commerce. And e-commerce is what we're here to talk about today. Uh, I'd also like to thank Natasha Hook, who works in the Minister's Office, as well as the Solent uh, Local Economic Partnership, Gospel Council, and a range of other councils uh, across the Solent area for their support in organising today's event. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. And from personal experience, of working uh, with local areas and local businesses before uh, in this manner, uh, local support and local support from council is invaluable to our ability to help uh, and to drive success uh, in, in the local area and local businesses. I thought I'd just talk, start off today by explaining <coughs> eBay and why we care about small businesses uh, and empowering notably small businesses here in the, U here in the UK. Um, ultimately, empowering SMEs is the heart of everything we do here at eBay. Uh, at the start of the year, there were around about 300,000 small businesses operating uh, on eBay here in the UK. That number is around about 350,000, as I talked to you today, as a number of new businesses have started and created online, very much driven by what's happened to us uh, in the context of the pandemic that's, uh, that's hit us all. Uh, and the important thing about us as eBay uh, and differentiates us, I think, from maybe some other marketplaces that you might be aware of. I'm not going to name them by name, but you can probably guess them. Uh, is that our model, our business model, uh, is intrinsically linked to the success of our service base. We are not distracted by other types of businesses. We don't have our own first party retail business and have no intention to put it on. We don't compete in any way. Our success, frankly, is intris intrinsically and indelibly linked uh, to the success of the sellers who operate on our platform. We only succeed when they succeed. It's a core founding principle of our business that we use technology to empower other people to access economic opportunity, no matter where you are and where you come from. That was the founding principle uh, of our business nearly 25 years ago. It runs true today uh, and it inspires me and makes me get up out of my, um, my bed every day to work, uh, to work at eBay because I think this is fundamentally the core of what we do uh, and we, we uh, will stick to that. To give you some sense of eBay as a whole, as a global platform, and give you an idea of the scale of it. Uh, last year alone, around about $85 billion worth, as US dollars worth of goods uh, were sold uh, on the platform. 
at any one time and around about now there's about 1.6 billion listings things for sale on the site and there will be over the course of this year around about 180 185 million buyers who will uh, buy something from ebay uh, globally um and, and if whatever your b belief system is about ebay and what you might imagine we're uh, we're like uh, and have, have recollections of our history as an auction site or, or very very focused on second hand the truth is the, the business, over, over two thirds of the business is now brand new and over 80% over of the business is basically focused on, on STB. So it's a fundamentally different business from maybe where, where we started. And in the UK alone, there are nearly 28 million buyers who will access uh, um, uh, the platform this year. That's, that's uh, more than half of the UK adult shopping popula population. Um, uh, uh, and, and um, Will, will, and they will access uh, kind of eBay here in the UK to kind of buy the things that they want and need and, and love. Give you an idea of the sense of that just here in the UK alone, uh, every nine seconds someone buys uh, a pair of uh, women's shoes, uh, someone buys a, a video game every six seconds. Uh, we sell on electrical clients every five seconds, someone buys makeup from eBay in here in the UK every two seconds, and someone buys a part to fit a car every second. So the scale of the business and the speed of the business is huge and our platform is big, but the reality is, is what powers that platform uh, is small businesses. And many of those businesses are, re are super small, um, really, really small. The overwhelming majority of businesses that we would classify are micro businesses, i.e. they have less than 10 people uh, in the business and two thirds of the businesses on the platform are sole traders. Near over, well over 60% of those businesses, those small micro businesses of one or under 10 people are exporting around the world. And in the UK alone, uh, three quarters of them exist uh, outside of London and the South East. It's very much a national phenomenon uh, and you can run and build a business from anywhere you are, anywhere you want here in the UK. One of the best bits of my job is I get to meet these sellers and talk to them and listen to their stories. I'm a frustrated entrepreneur. I wish I'd done it. Uh, but the best thing about my job is I get to see entrepreneurs and work alongside them on a daily basis. Um, and if, as a, as a way of hopefully inspiring you and give you an idea of maybe where you could take this, I'll just give you a kind of example uh, of some of the, the seller, the last seller I went to see just before lockdown kicked in again. Uh, and that seller started a business on, on eBay about five years ago. They bought um, a bag of used books um, from a charity shop. Uh, and they sold those books on uh, on eBay. You fast forward five years time and, and I met them just before we went into lockdown again and I met them in their new warehouse in Coventry. Uh, it's, yeah, their total warehousing space as a business now is over 200,000 square feet. They employ over 100 people. The measure the turnover in millions and they actually this year will ship the best part of 70 million books. But from a bag of books bought from, um, from a charity store to shipping 70 million books on a global basis, uh, and that's the kind of story that you can achieve on eBay. Not everyone will, and not everyone will, will, will want to do that. But I'll give you an idea of that's what that, that's the entrepreneurial spirit that exists here in the UK. And our job here at eBay is to try and empower it as best we can. So with all that success and uh, um, uh, and that scale, uh, stories that kind of like hopefully bring the platform to life. I think we need to be honestly reflective of what's going on up and down the country at the moment. And the fact that the pandemic and the lockdowns we're forced to take in order to protect uh, our, our health uh, and our NHS um, means that actually it's a really difficult time for uh, businesses um, up and down, down the country. Actually on eBay, about 47% of the businesses who trade actually have physical premises. So these are businesses that have a shop, which have obviously at some point over the course of this year and again most recently been forced to shut up. And it's their online businesses that are basically giving them the strength to carry on trading and actually given the movement of customers online, uh, then that's allowed them to kind of accelerate that online proposition and continue to access more and more customers, even in lockdown periods, which is keeping their businesses and their livelihoods. Uh, we've tried to do our bit um, as part of that. So we offered a whole series of extended fee, pay uh, fee payments for existing sellers. We've had a series of programs through the course of the year um, uh, reducing fees and they're giving incentives to allow new businesses to come online and many people have been uh, taking advantage of that uh, and you'll be pleased to know as part of the program that we're talking to you today today about uh, 
we have launched our Pay As You Grow initiative, um, which the team will take you through later and explain the details. But ultimately, this is designed to encourage any businesses that have been forced to shutter and want to move your inventory online uh, by effectively reducing our fees uh, until, you're, until you've built your presence and help, help you kind of get access and build confidence in your own business and your own business operations um, uh, without paying uh, the normal fees for um, and the team will take you through the details of that um, and that's all recorded as well so you can kind of catch up with it um, uh, uh, later on. And that's intended to help uh, businesses as, uh, who are uh, starting out, so there'll be many of you on the call who maybe have an idea that you want to create a new business, you, have a, you see an opportunity to market um, and you want to go after that. But it's also intended to help those who have physical premises you've, uh, you've had to shutter in, in kind of light of recent kind of um, changes that we're having to all kind of get through. Um, and our uh, view and my view, and I spent the uh, best part 20 to 30 years in the retail sector, is this notion that um, online versus offline uh, in, as being in competition um, uh, is, is not correct. And our view always has been, my view uh, personally has always been that building businesses that have a physical presence and supplementing that with an online presence is the, is the best answer to a resilient model, which will give you sustained growth over time, it gives you the chance to serve your customers locally in the locations where you are, um, to deliver great service for them, to give them that what they need, but using online to supplement that to give you access to a broader reach. Uh, in the case of eBay, over 180 million customers on a worldwide basis. We trialed this process um, uh, and that concept uh, in the city of Wolverhampton uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, and the basis of that program is forming the basis of the program that with the team are gonna to talk to you all about today. And in that program, in combination with local MPs, with local councils, we took nearly 60 businesses that were basically fit, were, were running physically, and we took them online. Um, we gave them an opportunity to access eBay, we gave them training, we gave them tailored customer support uh, in order to get them to kind of be able to access uh, on, um, online e-commerce as best we could. The results of that, just to give you an idea, in that city alone, uh, from those 60 businesses, their total sales over the course of the year's program, we put in total over 9 million and grew on an average basis of nearly a third of per annum. That has sustained ever since that point and actually accelerated through lockdown. Um, and I believe, and if I talk to the sellers that we worked with uh, at that time and are still part of the eBay family, the thing that basically has set them up now, even in this pandemic to sustain is, is putting in effectively the structures and the ability and the capabilities to access uh, on a, uh, an online channel while also trading their physical channel. So I think it's incredibly important as we go through the pandemic and we navigate all of the complexity of that, we use this as an impetus to change the way we think about businesses by blending both physical and, and online presences, presence. All of us have been forced to change through the consequences of the pandemic to live our lives differently. Um, we would, when we, when, we, when we launched this program, Wolverhampton, we stood in a room physically and met people. We're clearly doing this virtually, but all of us in our day-to-day -day lives are, are living and operating in a different way. I mean, in truth, in the observ my observation overall is that consumers in general and buyers at large, and all of us here in the UK are clearly transacting and living our lives, accessing digital uh, commerce on a more frequent basis. I believe fundamentally that's a trajectory that was always happening. The pandemic has accelerated it. And I can't see any reason for it to kind of reverse when we are clear of the pandemic and we'll get back to normal. So I, I would encourage you to think about how, as customers and buyers uh, up and down the country change the way they shop, how do you take advantage, frankly, of the online uh, opportunity that now exists and is accelerated as a result of uh, what's happened to us all uh, uh, as a nation. And it's my belief uh, fundamentally that if we can build that online capability uh, in your businesses and have partnered with you, that sets you up for great success in the future um, uh, post the pandemic. So of all of you who are participating today, um, there's a whole series of webinars uh, where the team will come forward and give you all the help and support we can uh, to try and get you to uh, help build your businesses online, whether you're starting from scratch or whether you're taking an existing business of migration. I hope that what we do is give you enough tools and help and support to do that uh, and inspire you uh, as best we can. Um, our ambition, my ambition is to, is to empower uh, all small entre uh, business entrepreneurs here in the UK 
Um, a Frenchman once described us as a nation of shopkeepers. I'd like to redefine that as a nation of digital traders and entrepreneurs. I think it's super important that we, whatever the world looks like post pandemic, that online and e-commerce forms an enormously important part of fabric of what we do here in the UK. And I hope that you will basically take advantage of that in your businesses and your day-to-day operations. But we can't do that alone and we need to help the government uh, to help you and create the regulatory environment to assist that. And that's why I'm really, really pleased that Caroline Dinich has joined us today uh, to talk to you all about how she envisages from a government's point of view, investing in digital skills, promoting e-commerce and how she sees the digital landscape playing out. Um, so I'll hand over to Caroline and thank you once again, Caroline, for joining us. Rob, and thank you to the whole eBay team uh, for hosting this event uh, for us today. Welcome to all of you for joining. I'm really uh, impressed that we've had nearly 500 people register for this series of, um, of courses. Just really, really good news. Um, my name is Caroline Dynage. I'm uh, the Gosport MP, first and foremost, and I'm also the Minister, as you've heard, for Digital and Culture in the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. And uh, But before that, I run a small business and so I always regard myself as almost a, a businesswoman's body or the or the other way around and everything I do is very much uh, through that lens through that training I started when I was 19 years old and so I've all my sort of formative years uh, in work were always as a small business um I always see uh, everything through that lens. So um, that's why I was really, really keen to do the, this event today. And I'm really grateful for all those who've made it possible. I've run out of uh, the, I've run out of the number of times, counting the number of times I've used the word unprecedented this year. It has just been the most crazy of years. And I know that it has been an incredibly, incredibly difficult period for businesses. But uh as my window cleaner said right at the beginning when it all kicked off that you know I Caroline I can see some opportunities here I can see some businesses rethinking how they do things and, and pivoting to do things differently and we all know that this the business environment is um it, it is so flexible is so resilient and is so uh forward thinking that we we know that people are going to take the opportunities that come out of this desperate situation and uh, and make something marvelous out of it and uh, and over the last lockdown period i saw many of my friends and constituents from garden centers to gift shops uh pivoting and offering their services online that they never had before and making a success of it but not only that giving their service to those that totally relied on them and uh, being able to keep their brilliant staff employed, you know, all, all amazing, uh, amazing things. And through my role as Minister for Digital um, and Culture, I've just had the most remarkable opportunities to meet some incredible businesses over the last few months who really took that opportunity and ran with it. Everything from industry you wouldn't even imagine could ever run digitally, uh, like you know the fashion industry through to um, uh, live animal trading markets. You know have have taken this impetus and and used it to flex their business and do things just a little bit differently. I'm so proud of the business community. I'm uh, you know and not only that, I'm so proud of the number of people that have taken from a really really difficult place have taken the opportunity here to start a new business and to think what they could do differently that would work with their family and their lifestyle um, and their situation and and you know my hat goes off to all people who've really had a massive pivot in their own lives in order to do things differently uh, so it really is a new way of trading for some people and there's just a few little tricks of the trade that I know that eBay will be able to um, to help you with. I know that in Gosport here, we have about 357 small businesses that trade on eBay, but across the Solent region, there's about 4,000 and I know we're joined by some people from just outside that region as well and welcome to you too. Um, I'm going to hand you back to the eBay team because quite frankly you're not here to hear me but just very quickly before I go um, a quick plug if you are a constituent in um, Gosport or Leon Solon or Stubbington or Hillhead I've also running a, um, a, a separate scheme um, via my uh, Facebook and other social media accounts to promote small businesses that have had to close during this current lockdown period but that are still offering a click and collect or delivery or, or online service of some kind uh, if you'd like to be advertised 
we're, we're running everything from photos to details to small little videos by, across my social media every day that this is um, we're in this new lockdown period I'm calling it small business November if you want to be involved please get in touch with the brilliant Natasha in my office and we will hook you into that so with no more uh, ado I'm going to pass you back to those who actually know stuff and uh, and wish you the most wonderful of days and the greatest possible success with your business ventures thanks so much thank you very much minister and uh, thank you rob for um uh, setting the scene for us so comprehensively i'd just like to say a special word of thanks uh, to you minister for your advocacy um within government for the tech sector and for online smes i think we're very fortunate to have a minister who not only understands the sector's uh needs um, but also has first-hand experience of um, running a business and, and helping to to grow it um sadly i know you've got a very busy schedule ahead of you today um, so you hope to join us for the whole morning, but I think you very kindly said you might uh, stay for a little while to go watch some of the presentations. Um, and I just wanted to thank again both of you for taking the time out of your very, very busy schedules today. It's greatly appreciated. So that concludes the, the introductory part of today's webinar. And uh, we now turn to the first of today's presentations um, on creating the best customer service, um, which will be given by James Carty from our global customer experience team in Dublin. Just before James begins, I just want to say um, a few words about logistics. We're hoping we can keep today's uh, sessions as interactive as possible, albeit within the constraints of the, the Zoom webinar format. Um, so we therefore want to kind of give you um, some time for questions at the end of each presentation. Uh, Annie uh, will hopefully post now uh, in the chat box a link to a Google form uh, where you can then submit questions. So please feel free to post these um, as they occur to you, and we can then put them to the, the team at the end of each presentation. If I could ask, please also specify the presenter to whom the question is addressed. That will help us uh, work through questions that we get in and help sift through them. Uh, we may not have time to answer all of them, but I promise we'll do our very best to answer as many as we can. So uh, without further ado, over to you, James. Thanks a lot, Alistair. <clears throat> Uh, good morning, everybody. So, yeah, my name is James. I work out of the Dublin office in the commercial team. My role within eBay is I work with the trading teams closely as a growth advisor and support them with their sellers. Today, I'm going to take you through a presentation on creating the best customer experience. So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, customer service in the market and also customer service on eBay and how we look at customer service on eBay. Uh, first of all, though, before we kick off, I just want to take everybody back and think about you as a buyer or as a consumer. And what is it that you want from businesses that you shop with? For me, it's getting the product I'm looking for and get it the service I expect. So if I go into a shop, I buy a product, I want to be happy coming out with the product I've received and happy with the service I received whilst, whilst I was in the shop. Um, that's the way I think uh, customer service should be, and that's the way businesses just think about how they create customer service for every customer that comes into their uh, business. If you can go to the next slide. So as I said, I'm going to talk about customer service, so creating the best customer service um, that will have a look at customer experience in the market, and I'll also talk you through customer service on eBay. If you can go to the next slide. So customer service and retail. Um, next piece, Annie. Just have a few stats and uh, figures here. So 43% 40, of consumers would say that they would consciously not buy a second service or product off uh, a business if they've had a bad experience. So customers are constantly thinking about the experience they have with businesses and they won't go back to a business if they have a bad experience with the, that company. If we go to the next one. One in six consumers claim they've had, they'll have a poor experience at least once a week. Usually this is down to the attitude or the competency of the customer service team. So again, potentially under 20% of customers that come into your warehouse or come into your business may feel they'll have a bad experience based on the customer service that they receive. Looking at figures like that, it is easily uh, determined that you can lose business if you're not offering the best customer service to your businesses, to your sellers, uh, sorry, to your buyers. So it is important to think of every seller or every buyer that comes into your business and treat them with the best customer service you possibly can so as not to, to lose those customers. If you can go next. More figures here. So 42% of um, customers 
would expect a reply within 24 hours if they contact a, custom, uh, a business's organization. Um, next, Daniel. And 46% uh, turn around within 24 hours if they contact an organization via email. The main call out here is 24 hours. Customers expect to get a response within 24 hours. Simple questions about a product or simple queries about an issue with a product can get worse or can have uh, can bubble up if they don't if customers don't reply receive a reply within a 24 hour time frame each each time that goes on longer the issue can bubble up more and more within the, the buyer and can lead to a bad buying experience for that buyer because they haven't had a response so trying to answer your customers within that 24 hour time frame to giving them the answer they need will help potentially get a sale for you if it is a, a product a, a product query or resolve an issue with a customer if they are having an issue with a product if we go next so Companies that are top performers are, um, are viewed across multiple customer service metrics. How you handle complaints is by far the standout metric that all companies are uh, looked at by. If you can handle complaints correctly, properly, you will be shown as a top performing company. But if you aren't able to hand, handle complaints, um, this will have an effect on your business. You need to have, you need to think about, and your customer service team needs to think about how they handle complaints when they come in, either face-to-face, -face, over the phone, or through email. They need to be able to understand what the complaint is that the, the person has. So what is the issue from, What is the issue with the buyer? What concern did I have, and how is the best way to resolve that complaint for the customer? The attitude has to be right as well. You need to have the right attitude when talking to a customer who has a complaint. Um, mirroring their demeanor, if they are angry, if they're, you know, shouting or you know not very nice uh, you may need to make sure that you're not mirroring their demeanor because that will obviously come across negatively uh, in, in relation to that complaint and um, again you don't you need to understand what they're talking about and not just make an assumption of what you think the problem is and try and resolve it quickly at the end of the day you want that customer to be able to walk out of the store or get off the phone or read a reply to an email be happy with how that complaint was resolved so that they will potentially come back to your business again. An example I'd kind of use in this scenario is if I'm going on a three week holiday across Europe and I go in to a tech store and I buy a universal plug for my travels and um, come back after three weeks and arrive back in the shop because that plug didn't work for me. So when I go up to the customer service and tell them that the plug didn't work, if the person behind the counter just comes back and hands me a new plug to try and resolve my problem, that's not resolving the issue. That's not understanding my issue because obviously I've been away. I've had my holiday. I've potentially had to buy a new plug anyway. So just offering me a new plug isn't going to fix the issue for me. So that's what I'm saying. You need to think about what the customer is saying, understand the issue so that you can resolve it for them in the right manner. You want that customer to walk out of shop, as I said, move away from your business, happy with how that complaint has been resolved so that um, they will potentially come back to your business again in the future. If we go next. So why is great after sales service so important? Um, offering a great after sales service will help bring loyalty to your business. 52% of consumers say they there is brand loyalty there if they're, they're offered a great customer service. So when you're dealing with customers, if you're offering customers a great customer service, if you're offering great after sales service, they'll feel loyal to your business and keep coming back to you to make additional purchases down the line because they know the service, the after sales service they're gonna receive off you is really good. If you go next. Not only that, they're twice as likely to spend more money with you because they know the service they're going to receive is top notch. So people, especially when it, when it comes to online retail, people are a bit wary of, of spending a lot of money first off because, you know, you don't physically take the item straight away. Um, but if you can build up a, a rapport with your customers and offer that great customer service, that great after sales services, those customers are going to be loyal to you and going to be happy to spend more money with your business. A, kind of a scenario for me with that um, over lockdown, when Ireland went into lockdown, I had the misfortune of dropping my phone and smashing the screen. So basically without a phone. Um, I didn't have the luxury of just jumping in the car to go to the shop to buy a new phone. I didn't have five or 600 quid to do that either. So what I decided to do was buy a phone through sellers on eBay that I've purchased off before and have had 
no issues with. So anytime I'd buy phones, I'd, I'd buy the bits and pieces that go with it. And I'd have a couple of sellers that I'd usually go back to. Because I know the service and the after sale service off those sellers were really good, I was easily happy to spend two, three times more um, with those sellers to buy a phone because I knew if there was any issues, any concerns, that they'd be there and they'd solve those for me. So happy to, to kind of part with a lot more money than usual for that. So that just shows, even in my scenario, that I'm loyal to those brands, that I've those sellers, those brands that I've shopped with before, and I'm confident that they were going to give me the service I wanted and so on, so on was able to spend more money with them. Uh, next. So again, 40, 75% of consumers would tell their customer service story to family and friends, be it the good story or the bad story. Um, not only that, now when you look at the likes of social media, we have um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that kind of fish net of people hearing a story is kind of gone out exponentially. So people who um, haven't spoke to people in a long time can still hear customer service stories based on the um, service that someone has had. Again, if I look at it for myself, you know, I've I finished school about 17, 18 years ago. I'm friends on Facebook with people that I went to school with that I probably haven't seen since school, but their customer service stories, if they put a story up about a good or a bad service they've received, <clears throat> that can um, sit with me if I'm making a decision or if I'm looking at like products. So I'd always say, it's not just thinking about that one sale, it's thinking about how many more sales you're gonna get out of that customer. And not only that, but how many more customers are you gonna get from that customer service that you're offering to that one customer with the word of mouth, with the social media presence that's out there now. So it's always thinking about every sale is an important sale. Every customer is an important customer because that helps retain customers, retain loyalty to your brand and bring customers and bring new customers back to your store. If we go next. Here is just a statement from the UK, UK CSI in relation to brand loyalty. So it kind of relates back to what I've been speaking about previously. So offering the great customer service um, will help give you uh, trust. It will help give you a better reputation and help recommend your business in the market. So the best customer service you can give on a day-to-day -day basis to the customers that come into your store will pay back to you with retaining those customers for those customers to come back to your business and also bring new customers into your business based on the feedback that they're giving out about your business. So every customer is important in growing your business on um, online, bricks and more, whatever it may be. Next. So I just want to talk a bit about customer expectations. So Nowadays, customers are shopping differently than when I first started working in eBay. People are looking to, try to get what they want and get it quickly. Um, so this will kind of harp more into Victoria's presentation later on about listing optimization, but making sure that what you put up on the platform is fully optimized. You have all the images, you have all the description, the specifics to showcase what you're selling. So that if someone is commuting in and out to work um, and quickly want to look online to buy, uh, make a purchase, that your inventory is showing up well for that seller so they can get in, look at what they want, make the purchase and then get on with the rest of the day. Fast and free delivery is another thing that what is another thing that customers expect nowadays. The majority of items, I think it's about 80% of orders that go through eBay now have free delivery. Um, and a large chunk of them have the fast delivery as well, so within three days. Again, this is what a buyer is expecting. They want to pay, uh, they don't want to pay for a postage charge, they don't want to pay postage charges and they want to get items quickly. Um, if an, if uh, a buyer is going to look at two listings, um, one with a postage charge and one without, they will look at the postage charging and they will look at the time frames that items are going to be dispatched and that will help them or decide in um, making a purchase with you or a different seller. Again, flexible delivery options. So again, customers will expect a free delivery, but also having the option of a paid for tracked service or a paid for faster service to give them the option that if they needed to get the item quicker, like me with the mobile phone, if I needed that quicker than you know the normal time frame, I have the option to pay that extra piece to get that item to me. Also, when we look at click and collect, having the option to get an item dispatch to a click and collect location so that if you work a nine to five job you're not going to be at home and um, for when the postman arrives to get that item you can get a 
uh, shipped to a click and collect location so that you can go at your leisure after work or at the weekend to pick that item up. When a purchase is made on site, customers like to be kept informed of the journey of that item. So when you make a purchase, you get the information to say the purchase has been made. Then the next tag on, so the, the items being dispatched to track an information so that a customer can track the journey of their item so that they know that, that that item is on the way and they'll be expecting it when it comes. And like I said previously, share their views. So customers like to share their views of good and bad experience that they've received um, with businesses. Um, so customers will share that we've all probably seen that when we're looking at social media the good the bad stories about services and business they've had people do like to to share their stories so it's better to be on the good side of those stories and, and drive more business to your account if you go next here are just uh, some customer sentiments based on the above so i'm more likely to consider buying online if i'm confident that what i buy will be delivered when i expect it so same again when when sellers are putting items on the platform they're telling buyers the time frame that the items will be dispatched to them buyers will expect items to, to be received within those time frames and will buy online if they're going to get that um, I'm more likely to buy an item online if I can choose to have it delivered fast and free. Again, it kind of speaks for itself. Customers look for that fast and free. It's what they want. Um, I don't know how many times I've seen pop-ups of things that I'd like to buy at good prices. Then when I click in, put it into a basket, there's five, six, seven pound added on as a postage charge. And then suddenly that good price doesn't seem as good anymore. And I may dip away and not buy it because of the postage charge. So what people want is the price that's on the box or on the listing. They want to be able to pay that price and, and move on and not have any additional charges. Um, I always know where my delivery is and that I can return the item and get my money back if I'm not happy. So again, having that information of the journey of the, the order so that, that you know where the item is. And if there is an issue with the item, if you need to return it for any reason, having that option with the seller that they're going to take that item back without any hassle so that you can... Um, send the item back and get on with your day next perfect so that's kind of customer service in general in the market and um, now i'm going to talk about customer service on ebay and how we look at customer service um there is a lot of information this we could potentially do a whole morning session on customer service on ebay and um, so i don't want anybody to think that you need to walk away from this and understand this this is just an overview of customer service on ebay and as you start selling on ebay and as you get more involved in ebay we will be able to give you more information and build up your knowledge on this but this will just be kind of an overview of of where we look okay next on eBay, we look at sellers um, in, as customer service and we rate them in a performance called seller standards performance. So what this basically means is we look at sellers each month on the 20th of the month and we look at their performance on site. We look at a look back period of either three months or 12 months. Um, the, the difference between the two look back periods is the number of transactions. If you have 400 transactions within the previous three months, we'll look back at a three month cycle. If you've less than 400, we'll look back on a um, 12 month cycle. We don't take the month that the cycle is run into consideration. So for example, on the 20th of November, when we run the evaluation, we will look back from October to August or October to November 19 for the seller's performance. In that look back period, we will book sellers into three different levels. So we'll be top rated sellers. There are sellers who are meeting the top uh, seller standards criteria that we've set out in the business. We either book them in there or we put them in above standard. So that's sellers who are uh, selling, uh, performing at a high level of standard, but not quite meeting that top rated seller metric. And we have below standard. So that's sellers who aren't meeting our um, minimum criteria for seller standards. As I said, we evaluate on the 20th of each month. So sellers can move between those levels on a monthly basis, depending on how their performance is month over month. Um, so if sellers are meeting top rated criteria, it is up to them to make sure they keep on performing well to keep in that level month on month. If sellers are below the top rated criteria, then they can look at their business or look at their performance to see how they can improve to move up that up, up to top rated. If we go next. So as I said, top rated sellers are sellers who are meeting the highest level of customer service that we set out on the platform. So being a top rated seller, there are benefits that come with this. On your account profile or in your feedback profile, we will 
tell buyers that you are a top rated seller on the platform and we'll give key bullet points to showcase um, you know great customer service uh, gets items out quickly uh, constantly receives high ratings from the buyers so this drives trust to buyers who are looking at seller profiles to think when thinking about making a purchase if buyers see these notes to say this seller is a top rated seller they're really good at customer service they're really good at getting items out in time it will help drive trust to your business bring new buyers into your business and build up your sales in the site as well as that top rated sellers items they show up high on our best match so with ebay with marketplaces there's obviously multiple businesses selling the same items when items are sent back in a search, they will be ranked um, depending on multiple criteria. And um, that's called the best match system. One of those criteria is seller standards. If you are a top rated seller, you will get higher visibility in that search. So again, you will get that higher visibility will hopefully knock on to have higher um, conversion, higher uh, visibility on your items. As well as that, with being a top rated seller, you have the option to use a premium service flag on your listings. Again, this is another badge that will showcase on the search page and on the listing page to show that that listing is a premium service listing. Again, without being a buyer or a seller on eBay, hearing premium service just showcases trust that this is a good good seller and a good listing. So again, that, that badge will help drive um, visibility will help drive sales for your items not only that with the premium service it also gives you a 10 percent discount on your final value fees so it helps in your pocket as well if we go next so with the premium service there is criteria that you need to meet to be a premium service seller so you need to have a 30 day or better returns period and um, industry standard is 30 days anyway uh, free domestic option delivery option within a three day work a uh, three day working time so from deliver so from um, order to, to delivery have within three days an express delivery option uh, within two working days so again having that express option for a two working day turnaround and attract delivery service for items over 20 pounds again if we look back at the seller expectations being able to return items getting items fast and free is what sellers expect so the premium service criteria feeds into customer expectation and um, here we again we just have a, a screenshot of what the premium service badge looks like so again if you are new to buying or selling on ebay just seeing that badge sitting on a listing will showcase that you know that is a trusted seller it is a loyal seller on ebay if we can go next so just want to read out some of the benefits again of being a top rated seller and uh, next so with the visibility, you get that higher placement in search that results in being top rank in the search, which will help drive conversion, uh, drive more sales on your inventory on site. Um, next. So that trust piece, buyers will trust you. You have those profile page endorsements to show you are a trusted seller on eBay and you bring a uh, brilliant customer service that will drive return business for you as a bit for with uh, buyers on the site because they will trust you um with making those purchases and come back to you in the future and um, next the premium service badging so again you'll get the premium service badging that you can showcase on your listings and this will stand you out against your competitors so if you have that premium service badge your competitors don't again that can sway the decision of a buyer to make a purchase with you and um, another good thing about premium services it's not an all or one feature and um, so with the criteria set out for premium service you could meet that criteria on some of your listings and not all of your listings any listings that meet that criteria will get the badge if you don't meet the criteria that won't be on the badge so you know you don't have to change low low priced items uh, to try and meet the criteria to get the badge or you don't have to change high priced items to, to change criteria you can have a mix between premium service and non-premium service listings so you get the benefits with the premium service listing that you do meet uh, next uh, so fees so again with the premium service you get a 10 percent discount on your final value fees so again that lowers um your overheads into the business so with that 10 percent discount uh you're paying less fees with ebay it's more money coming into the, the business that you can put towards uh, again trying to grow the business even further um but again just less fees just means less money that you're paying out so positive for a business and then we go next so impacts of falling below standard and um, with um, as I said at the top uh, top rated sellers are meeting the highest standards that are are, are um, 
metrics want and um, so they will get benefits if you are performing at below standard you aren't meeting the minimum uh, metrics that we have on site so there will be impacts to that again this isn't to scare anybody or isn't going to affect anybody when they sign up to ebay but it is just uh, to give visibility of uh, potential impacts of being a below standard seller Again, if a seller falls uh, to below standard on the 20th of the month, we're not automatically going to uh, drop them out or um, impact their account. We will give an account time to look into why the issues have arisen, why are they below standard, so that they can work on their performance to build them out of that. But some of the impacts for below standard, so reduced visibility, where our top rated sellers will have increased visibility at the top of the search, below standard sellers will be lower down in the search, so they will have that reduced visibility in the search pages. Um, we can hold funds, so if a buyer makes a purchase with you, we can hold the funds until we're happy that the transaction is completed successfully. Um, so that can obviously have an effect on businesses if we're holding the funds for that. And then if you are um, an anchor store or a featured store subscriber on eBay, um, you may lose those features if you're continually performing as a below standard seller. Again, this isn't something that will automatically happen if an account falls into below standards. Um, but if, if an account is continually performing in that area, then these are some of the impacts that can, ha that can have in the business. If we go next. So again, I just want to call out some of the key metrics that we look at for seller standards. Uh, again, just to stress that this is over an overview. I don't want people to think that they need to walk away and remember these percentages. But again, it's just to call out what we look at. Um, so we look at three key areas when we look at seller performance. We look at the defect rate. Um, the defect rate is made up of cancelled transactions and unresolved cases. So if I'm a buyer, I make a purchase on eBay. The main reason I made that purchase is because I want, I want the item. If the buyer does, if the seller doesn't have the stock to uh, fulfill that order to me, they have to contact, they have to cancel that transaction. That's a bad experience for me because the, order, the, the item was up on site, I made the purchase and then they weren't able to fill it. If that happens, it will, it will cause a defect to land on the seller's account. Also unresolved cases. So if I do make a purchase and I need to return an item or an item hasn't been delivered to me, um, I can open up a case on eBay. It's up to the seller then to resolve that case for me. So to organize the return, to make sure the item gets to me, check out any tracking that needs to be checked. If the, if the customer, if the seller doesn't resolve that for me, I have an option to reach out to eBay and ask eBay to step in. If eBay step in and find the case in my favor, again, that's a bad experience because I as the buyer have had to reach out to eBay to get support. So that again will fall as a defect on the seller side. We have a threshold of 0.5% um, for a defect rate to be top rated seller. So if you are 0.5% or lower, you are meeting the criteria to be a top rated seller on the platform. If you're between 0.5% and 2%, that is the window where sellers sit um, as above standard sellers. If you go above 2%, then that is outside the, the criteria we, 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 we have for sellers. So that will have you as below standard on site. Next, we look at delivery, uh, which we call late delivery rate. So again, when you list an item on the platform, you tell the buyer when you're going to dispatch that item and you tell them the courier service you're going to use to dispatch that item. So if you're going to use a 48 hour service and you're going to have a one day handling time, the buyer will have an estimated delivery date of three days. When you do that, you must be able to dispatch the item within the time frame and use the courier service that you've said you would. If you are not meeting those criteria, again, these will land as defects on your account. For this, we have a 3% threshold. So if you are below 3% on late delivery, again, you're meeting the criteria for top rated. If you go above 3%, you are in the below standard bracket, or sorry, in the, in the above standard bracket. Um, there is no metric or no uh, threshold to drop you into below standard from late delivery but if you do get around the nine ten percent area you know then we may need to get a, an educational call out to see what's going on and what's happening on the account finally we have the closed unresolved cases these are the same cases that we look at in the defect rate but again because a customer has had to reach out to a seller and then have to reach out to eBay, we, ba we, we look at this really highly in relation to customer service because potentially not only is the seller going to lose a customer, eBay may as well lose a customer based on that, that performance. So this area, we have a percentage rate of 0.3% uh, to be a top rated seller. 
Here, if you are 0.3% or less, again, you're meeting the criteria for top rated. But if you do go over the 0.3%, there is no threshold for above standard. It will go straight into below standard. For a seller to be top rated, they need to meet the thresholds for each area. If you're not meeting, meeting the thresholds for each area, your account will be bucketed in the least performing area for that uh, seller standard cycle. Okay. Um, also, just finally to call out, the, the defect percent percentages aren't static. So it is the percentage of defects versus the percentage of sales. So the more you're selling on the platform, the lower the defects percentage will be. If we go next. With uh, seller standards, eBay is obviously a global company, so we will look at seller standards uh, in multiple different regions. The way we have it broken up, um, we have a US region, a UK region, which is UK and Ireland, a, a German region, which is German, Germany, Austria and Switzerland, and then global, which is the rest of the world. Use will be sitting in the UK and Ireland region. So any sales that you have within UK and Ireland will be bucketed into your UK seller standards uh, dashboard. If you do decide to sell internationally, so if you sell into the US or into Germany or France, Canada, wherever, um, you will then have performance on multiple seller standard regions. So you will need to make sure that if you are selling internationally that you're checking each seller dashboard to make sure that your performance in each region is performing well. So you could be performing well in the UK and Ireland, but if you're selling into the US and having, having issues into the US, that can obviously have an impact on your, your performance there. So that's something, again, you need to check. Next. This is just a view of the seller dashboard on the platform. So when sellers are looking at their seller performance, we will show them this dashboard. It will be able, they'll be able to get visibility on their performance of the, the current evaluation and how they're trending towards the next evaluation. So in red, you'll see this seller is top rated. So that's the current evaluation. If we look at it now, that will be the evaluation that ran on the 20th of October. This seller uh, met all the criteria to be a top rated seller. So for the period of the 20th of October up to the 20th of November, they're performing as a top rated seller and getting the benefits of that. If we look at the blue, they're trending to be above standard. So this is the evaluation, and um, this is the trending dashboard to show them where their performance is trending for the next evaluation on the 20th of November. In this scenario, the seller is due to drop to above standard. So th for this seller, they can look at the different areas to see what area is not performing at a top rated level uh, so that they can look into that to look at make improvements. So in this scenario, the transaction defect rate is above the 0.5%, but below the 2%, and that's why it has them sitting in um, above standard. So for this dashboard, that seller would need to go away, have a look at the cases, have a look at the unresolved, uh, um, sorry, the cancer transactions to see what's going on there so that they don't have um, any issues with, um, their account dropping to resolve that before that happens. Um, next. Perfect. So seller performance. So what do you need to think about pre and post sales? Um, next. Stock availability. So again, when we talk about talk about cancel transactions, um, you need to make sure that you have the stock available to fulfill all the orders that come through to you on the platform. Again, the main reason why people are making purchases is because they want the item that they've, they've, they've bid on or bought. Um, so they want that item. So you need to make sure that you have the stock available to ship to them. If you are selling across multiple channels, making sure that you think about your stock control across those multiple channels so that you're not um, adding stock that potentially you may not be able to fulfill. And next. Okay, listing is fully optimized. So again, making sure that listing is fully optimized. Vicky will talk to you more about that later on today. Um, but making sure you have all the information in the listing so that the seller doesn't have any, or sorry, the buyer doesn't have any surprises when they get the purchase or get the item from you. Next. Uh, make sure you can meet the dispatch times advice. So again, as I said, if you're saying you're going to dispatch same day or next day, or you're um, using a 24, 48 hour courier service, making sure that you meet those dispatch times so that when the buyer is told they'll get the item within three days, that it actually arrives within that time frame to them. Next. 
uh, communications with all buyers. So again, from the top of the presentation, you know, making sure you're communicating with all your buyers, any questions they have. Um, a buyer who asks you a question before they make a purchase on a size guide or tech specs, if you don't answer them within the 24, 48 hours, you know, the longer you leave it, the likelihood is that they're going to go away and just make a purchase off someone else. And the same after a sale, if, if, if a, a buyer comes and asks you a question about a defect to an item or an issue with an item, the longer you leave it for, to answer their question, the more it's going to bubble up and become a, more of a serious issue for that buyer. Uh, next. Um, so be, again, being aware of the refund timeframes, as much as we don't want to have uh, returns, um, they will always happen so just being sure uh, that you're aware of the refund time frames to make sure that when you get returns back from buyers you return them in a good time frame so that uh, again there's no concerns with that buyer to have to ask ebay to step in and resolve any complaints they have because they haven't got refunds next Again, so just uh, more or less the same topics on pre-sales. So making sure your items are described correctly, getting your items out on time, managing your inventory to make sure you have the inventory to dispatch to your buyers, uh, clearly uh, responding to any questions buyers have before an order and having your returns timeframe laid out. Um, again, we say 30 days is industry standard. Um, so we would ask all sellers on site to have 30 days returns as a minimum for um, their returns timeframes on the site. Uh, next. And post the sale. So again, more similar. Um, respond to any questions you have from buyers quickly so that you can allow any fears they have or any concerns they have about the products. Uh, the dispatch time, again, making sure it goes out on time. Keeping the buyers informed of that journey so they will get uh, notifications of when the item's been dispatched, you know, the order came through, etc. cetera. Um, you can streamline returns on the platform so you'll be able to have uh, the machine in the background working on your returns and um, if it's low low selling price items they can uh, automatically refund so it can reduce um, reactive time on that and issuing returns in a timely time frame so again if a buyer has sent an item back to you giving them the return in a timely time frame so that they can they're happy to go away um, and um, Get the, get the return in a quick time frame and not have to contact eBay for any support after that. Okay, next. So that's me. Um, I hope that was informative. I hope it gave you some insights into how we look at customer service on eBay. And again, I hope it gave you a bit more information on customer service in the market. Um, and I'll stop there and see if there's any questions coming through. Great. Thank you very much, James, for that um, super helpful overview. Um, we do have a, a number of questions just from uh, participants. Uh, so the first was, how is a seller, um, does eBay support um, sellers where a buyer is uh, claiming an item as not as described, uh, I presume, sort of fraudulently? How do we combat misuse of, of this feature? Yeah. So, I mean, there is no definitive answer but I mean with the customer service teams if there is potentials where buyers are trying to get around a system with a, a not a described return where there is um, it is accurate and the customer service team can look into buyer activity look into seller activity and support sellers in that way and um, again yeah it is kind of a case by case there is no definitive answer but there is definitely support there for issues like that great thank you um, this may be a question for you possibly one when we talked about shipping, but um, uh, one of the participants asked um, late delivery defect rates due to COVID. Um, so if you dispatch your item on time and it arrives late, yeah. are, are they... So the way we look at late delivery, um, the first port of call for late delivery is the seller dispatching the item on time. So if, if I'm a seller and I'm given a one-day handling time and I'm using a track service, if the tracking shows that I've dispatched that, that item within the time frame I've stated, but it gets caught up in the, the Royal Mail system or it gets caught up in the courier system for whatever reason and is this delivered a day, two days late to the buyer, we won't mark you down for that because we can see you've done what you said you're going to do. You've dispatched that within that one day. We're not going to mark you down because for whatever reason, there's an issue with the courier service. So once this tracking is there to show that you've dispatched it on time, then we won't mark you down for that. That's really helpful. Um, just like a brief um, just a good point, I, I noticed one or two um, participants have kind of raised their hand. Um, again, I just um, reiterate, if you want to kind of raise questions, please use the, the link which is there in the, 
um, the chat box for the, the Google form, and hopefully that will um, allow us to kind of uh, feed in questions to presenters. Um, just a couple more um, uh, from our side. So, firstly, uh, if you started from scratch, you know, how long would it usually take for a seller to kind of reach standard of top rated seller? Do you have a sense of that? So when an account starts from scratch, there is uh, I think it's two or three month time frame before an account can actually get to top rated. Um, so there is that time frame to to get live on the site, get the sales up, to get those metrics. Um, again, we can potentially support if we can see an account is performing really well, is doing everything they should be doing. Um, if it is only a time frame issue, then we can potentially support and helping them move into that criteria earlier. Um, but Again, it is on a kind of an account by account view basis on how many transactions they've had versus how many issues, if any, they've had. And, and once we can see they're, they're set up correctly, they're, they're working well, then we can support on that. Great, thanks. So one final question, um, I, I guess a general one, which is um, what are the most common mistakes um, made by new sellers um, when it comes to providing customer service on eBay uh, and how can I avoid them? Um, one thing I've kind of come across when supporting kind of new sellers coming on, on board um it's, it's understanding the ebay policies so the likes of uh resolution cases return cases it's, it's understanding how ebay works how ebay looks at it and um, you know there is big small businesses that come on board they'll have their own terms and conditions they'll have their own return time frames etc and um, that, that's perfect but you know also just understanding how ebay works and how the criteria behind a return case what a seller needs to do there and um, so that they're doing it correctly on the platform aligned by what ebay say they should be doing and then that should help them kind of uh, move forward and um, another thing obviously is as well it's it's it takes time to build up visibility so um just understanding that you know it, it does take time when you set up an account on ebay to drive that visibility through and um, don't get disheartened if, if the first week or two you're not hitting the, the heights that you were expecting and um, it, it does get, you do get there it just takes that time to build up the visibility the trust with with the buyers and, and build those get those return buyers coming to you fantastic so thank you very much uh, james for um your presentation we're just going to take a very short break now um so feel free to uh put the kettle on um, if you're at home uh, or catch up on emails or maybe catch up on the latest American election results, whatever um, floats your boat. Uh, we'll recommence at 10.15 uh, where we'll be talking about how you can optimise uh, your online shop. So we'll see you soon. Thanks. Great. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, I hope you've had a chance to kind of get uh, refreshed and hopefully uh, recaffeinated. Um, our next presentation uh, is from Jamie Kilduff, also from our Global Customer Experience team. Uh, based in Dublin, and this is on making the most of your eBay shop. So over to you, Jamie. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Alistair. Hey, everybody. So my name is Jamie. Um, I am part of the commercial team here based in eBay uh, in Dublin. Um, I'm currently a business development specialist um, for eBay. So essentially what I do is I work with small to medium businesses who are both new to the website um, and then help uh, grow and scale existing businesses that are currently trading on eBay also. Um, so today I'm going to be taking you guys through making the most of your eBay shop, Okay. Um, so just before we get, begin, the best way to think about eBay, or this is how it used to be explained to me when I first started in the business over three years ago, um, is just to imagine eBay like a big shopping center. And basically your store is a shop within that shopping center. Okay, And our main goal is to make sure that we're driving as much traffic to your store as we can to make sure that you guys can maximize the amount of traffic um, and sales and visibility that you can get on your storefront. Okay, um, So if we can just jump to the next slide, please. Perfect, thank you. So just a quick overview of what we're going to be looking at today, guys. So we have the benefits of eBay shops, okay? We then have your different eBay shop subscriptions. We have your eBay presence. We have communication with buyers. And then we have your holiday settings, okay? So we're just going to jump in now to the benefits of eBay shops, please. It's the next slide there, please. Perfect. Thank you. Um, cool. So these are some of the main benefits of actually having an eBay shop, okay? So the first one we're looking at is going to be cost saving. And the reason it's going to be cost saving is because every time you list an item on eBay without a shop, okay, um, you're looking at paying a, what's called an insertion fee. And it's going to be 30 pence every time you put the product on the site, okay? Now, paying the 30 pence if you're just setting off a few of your bits is fine. Um, but if you have an eBay business and um, you have your own business and you want to set it up on eBay, that 30 pence very, very quickly adds up, okay? So when you have your eBay store, you just pay your eBay fee every month for that particular store and you get a certain amount of listings to list within that price, depending on what store you have. OK, you also then get a unique URL to your shop. 
So you have a URL that's unique to your store. So you can share it on your social media platforms, you know, your Facebook, your Instagram, and um, you can share it out if you have any marketing emails that you're sending out to previous customers who you may have from outside of eBay to help bring them onto your eBay shop, okay? And um, you get a unique shop front that captures your brand. So your store is obviously on eBay, okay? So it's on our website, but you're allowed to set that shop up in a way that captures your brand. So we have like a banner at the top of the page where you can put in if it's a new product or a sale or anything like that that you have on. You have a shop uh, description where you can have a little description about the business and then you get a little profile photograph as well. And I'll take you guys through more of that in detail in a little while. And the next one then is to create your own shop categories. So what you can do here is obviously when you list an item on eBay, it goes into a certain category on the site, okay? And um, so what that means is, is that the item will um, appear if a buyer is looking in that particular category. So what that allows you to do is um, create your own categories on the site so a buyer is actually able to find an item that they're looking for when they come directly into your store, okay? And um, you get access then to eBay marketing tools. So we get access to the likes of our promoted listings tool, which is our first party advertising that we look at later on. And um, you get access to order discount on Markdown. So if you want to do a sale, you get access to those tools as well. Okay. And then one of the main benefits is that the shop is always open. So you can be making sales at two o'clock in the morning when you're sound asleep in bed. And um, because you can have potential buyers coming in when the store is always open. Okay. Uh, just the next slide there, please. Brilliant. So these are the different levels and um, that we have of eBay shops. Okay. So the first one we have is our basic store. So you get inclusive fixed price and auction style listings, capped final value fees. Okay. In some categories, you get your customizable shop front. So again, you get to customize that shop, and you get 250 inclusive fixed price listings. Okay. So this means you get to list 250 items within the cost of the shop, which again I'll go through a little bit more detail later on. Then in the featured stores, the next one up, we have the basic benefits plus inclusive goods or cancelled listings in 13 countries. So you get to list on our other domains like ebay.ie, for example, or ebay.de for Germany, France, Italy, Spain, etc. Okay. And um, you then get 1500 inclusive fixed price listings within the cost of that store. Okay. And then with the anchor store, you get the basic and feature benefits. So you get all the benefits in the first two boxes and you also then get unlimited fixed price listings. Okay. So it's completely unlimited on the amount of listings that you can actually list on the site within that store. Okay. And just the next slide there, please. Brilliant. And um, so the next thing we're going to be looking at then is the eBay shop subscription. So if you can just jump into that there, please. Brilliant. So this is just a quick breakdown of how much each store is going to cost each month. Okay. So as you see at the start here, if you have no shop, you're going to be looking at paying 30 pence each time you list an item on eBay. Okay. But with the basic shop, you pay 25 pounds per month. This is um, inclusive of VAT. Okay. So it's 25 pounds per month. It has a value of 90 pounds. Okay you get 250 free fixed price listings within that store itself. So you only pay 25 pounds for the 250 listings that you're gonna list. You get 50 free seven day auction store listings. Okay, so if you have some items that you wanna auction off, you have 50 of those. And then if you go over the 250, it's only 10 pence then for each additional fixed price listing. Okay, so rather than paying the 30 pence, you get your 250 listings for the 25 pounds. And then if you do happen to go over that, you only pay 10 pence, okay? The next one then we're looking at is the featured shop. So again, this is 69 pounds per month. The value is 245 pounds, okay? You get your 1500 fixed price listings. You get 300 free seven day auction style listings. And then each additional fixed price listing is only five pence after that, okay? And then with the anchor shop, it's 399 per month. The value of it is 1,275 pounds. You get unlimited fixed price listings, okay? you get 500 free seven day auction store listings. And then obviously any additional fixed price listings are free. Okay. So that's just a complete breakdown of the stores and how much they're going to cost each month. Okay. So obviously depending on the size of your business, it's going to depend on what store you want. And then as you grow and scale on eBay, you can then just change the store as you see fit. Okay. And just the next slide there, please. Brilliant. So the next thing we're going to be looking at here then is your eBay presence. Okay. So if you can just jump into the next slide there, please. Thank you. Perfect. So there's going to be two main parts of the site where a buyer can come on and they can get a sense of your um, business and how you work. Okay. So we have the user profile here on the left hand side, which is giving you basically a look at um, your feedback, etc. And then on the right hand side, then we have your eBay shop where a buyer can come in and browse the items you have to sell. So we're just going to look at these two in a little bit more detail. So if you can just jump onto the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so we're looking at here first the eBay shop, okay? So 
again like i said earlier on okay you can personalize your shop by adding a billboard a logo and a shop description okay so as you can see there at the top we have the banner okay where you can put in and um, you can essentially put anything in here you just need to make sure obviously the banner fits and um, so the dimensions for the banner is 1200 by 250 pixels just an fyi in case you need to know that and um, so when you put in the banner you can just give the buyers a feel of the product that you're selling okay so for here for glam and grace we can get a bit of a feel of what they're selling okay now you can update this at any time so for example if you have new products that you're going to sell on the site and you want to give them a bit of an extra push and um, just to let the buyer know there's new items on sale you can make a banner up for that and put it in there if you have a sale event running like 25 percent shop wide say for example you can put that in a banner and put it in here then as well okay we then have the logo on the left hand side here so nine times out of ten a um business would just put in their actual logo in here for the little profile picture okay and then you just have your shop description here on the right hand side so you can just put in a little bit of a blurb about your shop there as well okay if you could just jump up to the next slide please perfect thank you so the next one then we're looking at is your user profile okay so this is where a buyer can come in and have a quick look at your feedback and see how you're actually doing on the site okay again building up a feedback profile is obviously a very positive thing to do on the site because nine times out of ten a buyer will come in and have a look at your feedback before they purchase from you okay so you can see here we have the 23 positive feedbacks we have the zero neutrals and zero negative okay so the buyer can see that this is obviously a trustworthy seller we have their feedback ratings then on the left hand side so how they're actually rating depending on how is the item described communication shipping time shipping charges and then on the right hand side then there's a couple of blurbs coming from a buying perspective that buyers have left on the profile uh, just to say how they actually got on with the transaction okay and um, you can actually see the items for sale here as well but nine times out of ten a buyer will just go straight to your store if they're happy enough with what they see here okay let's go to the next slide please brilliant so just give me let me give you guys some examples of some well-branded shops okay so on the left hand side here we have the adidas uk official store okay so as you can see they have their banner at the top there it's a high quality photo uh, an emphasis on the product that's right smack bang in the middle of the banner okay so you guys know it's for the shoes then on the left hand side they have their adidas logo so again it's pretty much a household name so we'll all recognize that logo from somewhere um, and then on the left hand side you see their categories broken down and um, the categories are extremely important to have in the store especially for um you know an account like adidas because they have so many different products on offer okay if I'm looking for a new pair of trainers, I don't want to have to scroll through all the kids section first and get you all the women's section first and then get to my shoes and then have a look around. I want to be able to just click on the men's runners on the left hand side there just to make sure I'm going straight into what I want to see straight away. OK, um, and then on the right hand side, we have a jigsaw outlet. These guys have a little bit more detail um, on their shop front. So they have, a, again, a high quality banner. They have their logo on the left hand side. They have their business name. And then they have a bit of a blurb about themselves in the description. So it's just to give the buyer a feel of what their business is about. Okay, so good opportunity just to give a quick background in yourselves. Again, on the left hand side, they have all the categories set up, which is fantastic. So if you're coming in and looking for something in particular, you can just select on the category that you want. And then another cool feature that I really like is the featured items. So within the featured items, basically what you can do is you can choose three or four items that you want to appear at the top of the page. Okay. So let's say, for example, you have some new items that you guys want to um, give a little bit of an extra push to, a little bit of extra visibility, you can have them here. You might have some items that are on offer. So again, you can just have them at the top of the page, just so they're visible as soon as the buyer comes in then as well. Okay, just to give a little bit of an extra push to those items. So just remember that that feature is there within your store as well. Okay, if you can just jump onto the next slide, please. Perfect. And then just another way you can actually continue on with the branding of your shop and the branding of your business on eBay is within the item description. So we can just see here within Jigsaw. Um, again, on the description, they have Jigsaw eBay outlet store. So again, you know, it's legitimately Jigsaw. This is their eBay outlet store. It matches um, how their actual storefront looks. And they just have a nice picture of the, of the item that they're selling. And then on the left hand or the right hand side there, excuse me, they just have um, a breakdown of the features of the item um, and what the item is and the price as well. Okay, so it's just to make sure you're continuing on with that branding. If you can just jump on to the next slide, please. Perfect. So the next thing we're going to be looking at then is your communication with buyers. Okay, let's jump into that, please. Perfect. Thank you. So communication with buyers like james said earlier on is extremely important on the site just to make sure you keep an open that line of communication with the buyers and um, from the very beginning okay so what we've done is we understand that as you get busier and busier um, and there's more you know orders coming in etc it's, it's hard to just keep writing to everybody that, that sends and um, that purchases an item from you so what we've done is we're able to actually set up um customizable automated emails that you guys can send depending on where the buyer is during their transaction journey okay so you can send customized automated email notifications you can send customized invoices to your buyers 
and then you can request buyers to subscribe to your shop okay so there's a couple of different steps that we can take to do this so i'm just going to give you an example um of a few of the times on the site when you can actually send an email and then i'm going to take you guys through a quick example of just how this basically looks and how it works so if you can just jump to the next slide there please Perfect. So a couple of times when you can send an automated email. So let's say, for example, you have an item up for auction and the buyer wins the auction. You can set up an email to go straight to them just to advise, hey, you've won the auction. Congratulations. And um, if you can just pay as soon as possible and then the item will be dispatched when the buyer actually checks out. So when the buyer checks out the item, so they've gone ahead and purchased the item. You can send a quick message just to say that you've actually confirmed that you have received payment for the item and it will be dispatched in the next two working days, for example. If you need to send them a payment reminder, so if the buyer has committed to purchase the item, but they haven't paid yet, you can give them a gentle nudge and just say, hey, you've committed to purchase this item, just a gentle reminder to pay within the next 48 hours or something like that, okay? Then we have dispatch notification. When the order's been dispatched, just send them a quick email. We've all gotten it ordering online, the excitement of it, getting your tracking number and you're tracking it for days. And um, you get your dispatch notification, just say how this item has been dispatched. If you're sending with tracking, you can just give them the tracking details, et cetera. And then a few days after they've received their item, it's just nice to give them a little gentle nod, just ask for some feedback, so a feedback reminder. So you can just say to the buyer, hey, thanks very much for purchasing this item off me. Can you just go ahead and leave feedback when you get a chance? So it's just a good opportunity to do that. Can we just jump onto the next slide there, please. Brilliant, thank you. So another um, opportunity to actually send an automated email here is when the buyer checks out. And I'll just give you guys a quick example of what that looks like, okay? So... This is going to be when the buyer actually purchases their item. So the buyer has purchased the item off you and you're going to send an email back to them just to confirm the purchase and confirm you've gotten payment, okay? So just as it says here, the order confirmation email thanks your buyer for their purchase and tells them where to go to find their purchase, okay? And this is a bit of what the body of the email looks like on the right-hand side. I'll give you a closer look now on a couple of slides. If you can just jump onto the next slide, please. Perfect. So this is how it's going to look from your perspective. So this is where you can actually have complete control of what's over the body of the email. OK, so you can just say, let's say, for example, my username might be jamieK123. I'll just say, hi, jamieK123. Thank you very much for your purchase. We have received your payment. The item will be dispatched in the next working day and we'll send you an email notification once the item has been dispatched. OK, or you might say, hey, thanks for your, um, thanks for your purchase. The item will be dispatched in the next working day to keep up with your order. Please go to your selling history on eBay or something along those lines. OK, so you have complete control over what's in this email again it's just an opportunity to bring the buyer on the journey from the very beginning it makes them feel a little bit special that they're getting this email and they know they've actually the payment has gone somewhere they've received this and you know the buyer or the seller has received the the payment and they're just confirming that they with the buyer okay if you can just jump onto the next slide there please Brilliant. So this is just an example of what the email will actually look like. So it'll say something along the lines of, here's your order update. And then in the body of the email, it will just basically say, hey, here's the update on your order. We've received payment, etc." OK, so again, it's just bringing the buyer on that journey from the very beginning, just to confirm with them that they have actually, um, you know, the payment has been received and the item will be dispatched in the next working day or so. OK, cool. If we can just jump on to the next slide there, please. Brilliant. Um, so the last thing that we're going to look at today is going to be holiday settings. So um, I'm just going to take you guys through how the holiday settings on eBay actually works when it comes to your store and your listings. Perfect. So essentially with the holiday settings, what you can do is you can make your fixed price listings unavailable. OK, so there's two options here. You can leave your listings live on the site for the time that you're going to be away for a couple of weeks. OK, and you can just update your dispatch time. So you can just push out the dispatch time to match the time that you're going to be away. Or if you want to take a complete break and you don't want to have too much work to come back to when you're when you're coming back off your holidays, you can make your fixed price listings unavailable. OK, so they're not going to be on the site anymore. But then when you come back and you take holiday settings off, the items will go back on the site then uh, straight away for you automatically. OK, we can then also set up messages on the site to show buyers that you are going to be away if you leave the items on the site. OK, so, for example, on your listings, you can leave a message on the listings just stating that you're going to be away until X date and you will dispatch the order as soon as you're back. You can also have the same message within your eBay shop. So if a buyer happens to come to your store first before the listing, it'll give them a quick little notification just to say that you are going to be away till X days. OK, and then you can also um, send out of office replies, obviously, like your normal email. So this will allow you to basically write back to somebody and advise them that, um, you know, you're out of office until X date. And as soon as you come back, you will actually reply to their message. OK, if you can just jump onto the next slide there, please. Perfect. So this is basically what the holiday settings look like when you have it set up on your store. OK, so I'll just have a message at the top of the page. As you can see, you're always actually drawn to it when you come in um, and it will just notify the buyer that you guys are actually um, away until X date. OK, so again, it's just setting that expectation with the buyer. So, you know, if the order the item, there's going to be a bit of a delay in the item coming, uh, 
I would actually making it to them. Okay. And this is the same message that's going to show in your storefront as well. So again, if a buyer happens to come directly into your store, it will actually just show them this message message, excuse me, as soon as they come into the store. Okay. If you can just jump onto the next slide there, please. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so that's actually going to be it for myself there today. Um, if you guys have any questions, obviously I'm sure there was a few questions along the way. So feel free to just to fire them over to me now. Great. Well, thanks very much, Jamie, for that whistle stop tour of um, eBay shops. Um, that was um, very comprehensive. Um, just a kind of a brief words to um, participants. Mm -hmm. We've had some questions coming in just about where they'll be able to kind of uh, view any recordings um, of the webinar. We will be following up with you via email because obviously you've registered with us. We'll follow up as and when um, we've got the webinar sort of hosted online and we'll give you that link. So don't worry about that. We'll be uh, in touch after uh, the webinar. We did have a couple of questions um, here from businesses. Firstly, yeah. um, if I'm a beginner to selling on eBay as a business, which of the, the shop subscriptions would you recommend to me? Um, you know, does it depend on how long I've been selling or, or how much inventory I have to sell? Which which one would be best, or is it just different for? Um, yeah. Good, great question. That's a really good question. That's a question we get quite often, especially from my perspective, working with new businesses, obviously, and um, they're asking what store should I set up. So what I would recommend is I would actually recommend um, looking at how much inventory you have on site. So if you have, say, for example, um, 1,200 SKUs to list on eBay, you're obviously not going to go with the basic store because that only accounts for 250. So I'd recommend going with the featured store. So mainly what I would look at is how much inventory you're actually going to be listing on eBay. Great. That's really helpful. Um, and the second question was, to, to what extent can uh, people use their eBay shop to advertise their physical store uh, and drive traffic to their, their physical sales? I know this has often been a, a sensitive one in the past because of you know, people trying to take people off the site and their limits as to what people can uh, show in terms of their contact details. But um, what would you advise there, Jamie, and, and how can they also help build up their brand um, offline as well as online so that you know, um, their online store can complement their offline sales yeah absolutely so the best way to do it is actually is to use your social media platforms to your advantage in this case if you have a bit of a presence on the likes of um you know twitter uh, facebook instagram you can actually link your listings directly with facebook there's a feature on the listings page where you can share them on facebook so if you for example if you have like a special offer happening on some of your items you can share those items on Facebook and just say, hey, how's it going, guys? Just to let you know, we have a bit of a deal going on at the moment on our eBay store. And um, please see, you know, the listing is below. Go on and have a look. And um, you can also then share that. So you get a unique URL for your store. So you can share that as well on your social media platforms also. And um, so it just gives you an opportunity to drive some traffic from outside of eBay and bring them into your eBay store then. And other things which they shouldn't do, you know, potentially, you know, including um, mobile numbers or, or whatever. Is that yeah. yeah, absolutely. So again, the system is set up that it won't actually pick up if you put in a mobile number or an email address or anything like that. It doesn't allow you to put that information on the site. Again, the reason we don't want any of this happening is because if you are having a conversation with somebody through your email address about a transaction, we can't see that if something goes wrong for us to step in and protect you. Um, you know, unfortunately, these things do happen. It's the nature of the beast. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we can see everything just so we can step in and give you guys a hand with anything that you need because we're here to back you up 100%. So in order for us to actually be able to do that, we need to be able to see everything that's happening on the site. And um, so always keep your communication through the messages. Uh, don't share any email addresses through the messages. Don't give them your phone number, nothing like that. Just keep all the communication through the eBay platform. And just tell the buyer that sometimes you just have to say to them, look, this is how we communicate with our buyers on eBay. This is the way our customer service works. We're absolutely happy to help you as much as we can, but this is how we do our communication on eBay. Fantastic. That's really great advice. Um, so we're going to take a break now, um, uh, after which we'll uh, recommence. Um, uh, I think about um, maybe 10.50, I think, for uh, able to get our next presenter online. And that will be with um, Berenger, uh, Chantal Fuchs, um, who will be uh, talking to us about um, how to drive uh, value for customers. Uh, see you in a second. Great. Well, um, welcome back, everybody. I hope you're all bearing up. We haven't um, given you too many uh, PowerPoint slides to digest. Um, we've heard already about uh, how to um, deliver great customer service, how to make the most of your online shop. Um, and now we're going to hear um, from uh, Berenger Chantra Fuchs from our, our Richmond office, about uh, drivers of value for customers. Over to you, Berenger. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alistair. And uh, welcome, everybody. I'm very happy here to talk to you about drivers of value. So my name is Berenger Chantreau-Fuchs. 
I'm the head of product marketing at eBay UK. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you about how eBay buyers perceive value on eBay and the tool you have on eBay to offer great prices and indicated this value. So I, I, I understand that uh, you had a pre previous presentation about eBay shops. So it's, a, it's actually great timing because this presentation is about some of the marketing tools that are in the eBay shop uh, to make the most of uh, your businesses on eBay. So at the end of this session, um, you could expect a few things. You will know you, you will know a little bit about um, how value is perceived by shoppers and on eBay and on online marketplaces and how and when you can use those price promotions on eBay and to get guidance on how to choose the right promotions for your inventory. Um, Alistair, is it you that are driving the slides or is it me? Yes, great, thank you. <laughs> so can we just um, a few more click to finish the construction of the slide? Thank you very much. Uh, so I just want to start um, by reminding everybody of the scale of eBay and what it is to actually be open on eBay uh, and what this, this does mean. There is three more clicks, uh, please. Uh, we, we all know that eBay is a global marketplace, but really, really the sheer volumes is something that um, is, is difficult to get a grasp with um, when, when, when you start. Um, so last year, there were 86 billion of trading volume on eBay globally. Um, and, you know, every time there is a listing on eBay, it is actually advertised or it could be advertised to 183 million of active buyers globally. So what it means is that you, the, the listings that are on eBay are, of course, uh, you know, looking at this reach, but that also means that there is a lot of those other listings, um, and that um, there is a, a few tip and trips, uh, tip, tips to remember about how to stand out. Very important to remember as well. Seventy around eighty percent of all items are new. And um, mostly, you know, a lot of, of, uh, of items that are translated at eBay are from uh, conditions new and not just used item. There is also 70% of the transactions that are free of shipping cost, cost across US, UK, and Germany. And lastly, uh, most, most of our customers are actually looking at listings or looking at items through mobile devices. So the, 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 ent the entire, um, you know, the, 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 the share, the share of, the share of sales uh, uh, across mobile devices is a, a very, very significant. So we can go to the next slide. <laughs> and sorry, I'm just struggling with different different windows to <laughs> to go to that. But that that that, that's, uh, that will will be a bit better now. So as a result. Uh, it's important to make uh, your listing set up from the crowd, and it's important to understand about the drivers of value that's uh, that's uh, that's that's uh, caused with it. Growth requires fertile ground, so the, the, your your listings and your shops will be advertised to all of these businesses and all of these buyers uh, from a, from a different perspective. Can we go to the next slide, please? <laughs> How is value perceived on eBay? So one of the things that we do as a team, um, product marketing team, is that we interviewed millions of customers or we looked at the millions of customer, of customer data that we have. So when we survey and interview real customers, buyers in the UK, they are telling us that they see eBay as a great destination for value shopping, a place they value for getting something they were not expecting at that price, for getting more value for the money. And one of the reasons why we are talking about those marketing tools today is that because we really see you know, a change in the way that buyers are seeing them and interacting with them. So up to 10% of additional sales on a listing that had a multi-buy offer, for example. The other tool that is also very seen very, very well by eBay um, and by eBay buyers is called Offer to Buyers. And when you, you, you use this um, tool, you can see up to 30% of conversion from people interested into your listing into buying uh, the item. And this is dri dri driven by really the, the type of value that we can see and the type of perception uh, that we can see on eBay uh, and the, the expectation of a great price, of a discount sometimes, and of course, of, um, of a great items that goes behind it. 
Can we go to the next slide, please? Sorry, there is two clicks. Thank you. And next, next click. Thank you very much. So, what eBay, what um, customers are telling us as well is that they don't stop just at great prices. They want, they want a bit more. Here are the, all the few things that can make a conversation with customers about what makes a great price and how they feel about value. So first, uh, service is king. They look for value beyond price. What it means for you is that the velocity that you get with a great price will be amplified with a great service. I think that you also had um, a presentation this morning about customer service. So this is, this is, this is of course, uh, where this is shown. In terms of the driver of, of value, what is important is to see that there is a number of, of things that are related to service that the customer see before making a transaction. And this is the speed of delivery. This is the return policy, for example, or the importance of having different delivery options speeder delivery for people that want it very soon um, or a click and collect services. So what they do, what, what is important here to understand is that value is beyond price and that actually those are what we call retail standards sometimes or what we can talk about this pre-listing signal that you will offer a great service are very important uh, for the transaction, very important for buyers. The second thing that buyers are telling us they want is transparency on the service, the service and the savings. They want it clear and transparent about the, the value and the, and the, of, the, of the item, but also what they will get if they have an offer. What it means, for example, is that if you participate in the coupons, you will see all of those uh, different um, clear messages. If you put um, an offer on your listing, uh, it will also be very clear and it needs to be um, price established for some time before you can claim a discount. And they're, they're, the, but the other thing that they are telling us is that there is a lot of emotion involved when looking and finding a great price. What they're, they're talking to us about feeling like a winner or finding a hidden gem. And those things are things that you can replicate on eBay. These things are also things that you know all of us have, have found offline when we were shopping, um, either in a in a sales corner, for example, uh, or even sometimes negotiating directly. Those things could be replicated online with some of the eBay marketing tool. And it's important to remember the human connection that the marketplace can um, can create uh, with those uh, with those uh, services and those tools. Thank you. Can we go to the next slide, please? So to help, identify, to help buyers identify great value, you can also focus on those five tops area. So first, great titles. Can you click, please? Yes, Let, let's do the five now. Then we have all the slides built. Thank you very much. So five top area to make your listing stand out, to indicate to your buyer that you are offering great value. First, great title. Be sure that you describe very well what you are selling use the 80 characters that is in the title uh, and get for the right keywords. Research with Therapeak, which is a tool that is uh, available to every shop subscribers in the, in the Seller Hub research tab to look at what, is, what would be the best title for your item. Then item specifics. Um, you will hear a, a bit more about that later on. It's the way that uh, to, to use keywords to actually indicate to eBay what your I listing is about. Great picture, of course. Um, we can, you know, we, we you can use actually up to twelve. We will comment at least five. It's better to have transparent or white background and to comply with policies. Then great price. We will dig that a little bit more about here. Um, first, first, um, you know, importance to be competitive on eBay and externally from the beginning. So uh, the best practice here is, of course, to look at different items that you can you can see to define what is the, the the price the competitive price for your item it's also to continue look looking at it because of course it can change over time and then add the promotion on top of it as either something that is for a, a, a temporary period or that is conditional to the buyer the buyer having more into their basket and lastly, 
some of those um, services that I was talking about in the last slide, retail standards. So how fast you are shipping, uh, is it, if it is free shipping or if the postage um, has to be added to the price, the length of the return policy, and if you offer different type of shipping options. So thank you. So all of these five things are what you can look at uh, to, to stand out and where the, the different drivers of value that you can use on eBay. Can we go to the next slide, please? So now I will focus a little bit more on the price promotions and uh, which seller have promotions to use to actually add and, and add an, an, an additional layer of value onto your listings. Next slide, please. So seller hub promotion is a number of, uh, of, uh, of tools and promotion tools that we are offering on eBay. And you can find them on seller hub marketing tab and click promotions that will lead you to the promotion dashboard and at the top right hand corner there is a button create a promotion where you will pre be presented with a set of options order discount multi buy and sell event which is the one that we will be looking at now so if you remember a little bit can we please click to have the slide built. Thank you very much. So there is a number of different type of promotion that you can use on eBay. The, the, the first one, which is the one that we launched 18 months ago, it's called MultiBuy and it's, it's very popular uh, by, for, for, for buyers and for sellers as well. And MultiBuy is when you have a different price of the item, if you buy one, buy two, buy three, buy four or more. Um, it's relatively simple to set up. You can set it up forever, for three years actually, uh, on the listing, um, or use it temporarily if you want to actually accelerate the sales velocity of an item. The other type of, of uh, promotion is order discount, and it could be an order discount of a threshold or of a quantity. So an order discount with a threshold will be something like extra 20% when you spend £125 or more. So those, those promotions are interesting to drive basket size, to encourage your buyer to buy more than one, and uh, to also achieve for you saving by having more than one item within the same parcel. So if everything is on free shipping, then you, you have, um, you, you're making a save, uh, saving on having to sell two parcel. The third type of promotion is sell event, and sell event is relatively you know, straightforward, is um, a reduction in price for a temporary period, two, two, two weeks maximum, where you shout about the fact that you have reduced an item, the, the item price. Um, so it's, uh, it's used, uh, of course, across the board, is the type of, of offer that you see a lot also at retail moments like Black Friday or, um, or during Easter sale and uh, it is li linked to seasonality as well. And then lastly, the last tool that we have on eBay offered to buyers, which is um, um, a, a very interesting tool because it's, a, it's, it's to send a private offer to buyers that are interested into your item. So, you know, the great thing on eBay is that we, as buyer, we have a number of, of uh, ways to actually signal the seller that we are interested. We can watch the item, uh, we can also just browse and be interested, put the item into our cart. And that will trigger actually the possibility to receive an, uh, an offer. And if the seller wants to, uh, to, to, to offer uh, a discount, which could, should be 5% five, five minimum, then they can actually engage with you and send this uh, offer to buyers. Can we go to the next slide, please? <laughs> so, this is uh, something, uh, there's a, a few clicks to build the slide. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, a few, uh, two, two more. <laughs> Thank you. So one of the things that was uh, interested into the data that we are, we've looked at uh, for actually now for, for more than a year is that this, those promotions uh, could, be, could be selected depending on the item price and the volume of sales um, from a seller perspective. So basically the item price, if you have 
an item that is what we call AASP, high ASP, so high average selling price, which will be over 30 pounds, for example, then sell event and offer to buyers works better than multi-buy and order discount. And then for items that are of a lower item price, so lower than 30 pounds, then in this case, those um, conditional offers like order discount or multi-buy works better. And then depending on the volume, then order discount on multi-buy works better. So for example, if you are a seller of money unique items, you know, you have one, two, three of the same item. Well, then in this case, order discounts works very well to do bundles. Uh, so could, an example could be, I want to have a, a hat and a scarf and a glove and all of those matching. Multi-buy works better for items that you can you know, buy in larger quantity. It works very well for batteries, for example, or uh, garden fences <laughs> as well. Um, everything that we're actually buying one, two, three or four at a time uh, makes sense. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so we talked about how to define the best listings or the best promotion uh, for your listings. Then the second thing to, to take into account is that to be able to make the most of those tools, it's something that should be reviewed regularly and that there is time within the life cycle of a listing where those promotions make more sense. So at the beginning of a new listing, or at the beginning of a new season as well. Uh, it's good to use TerraPeak to be sure that your price is competitive. And it's also good to, to set up multi-buy and order discount as evergreen. Um, and to, to, to use this you know, for, the, for the entire period of the, of the listing. Then, I, then when, when the listing is a little bit more established or when there is good retail moment that are making the, the listing you know, very, very, performing really well. You can use sell event to accelerate that, uh, to be sure that you, you, know, you make the most of the interest from the buyers. You can test elasticity as well with sell event plus markdown. If you say, oh, but what happened if I actually lower by 10%? What happened if I lower by 20% for a week? You can also um, increase the multi-buy and order discount uh, conditions. And this could be interested, especially during seasonal event to accelerate sales velocity. And, and make the most of the seasonality. And using offer to buyers is also very recommended within this um, seasonal moment. And then at the end of the life of the listing, well, those promotions also works very well uh, to do a number of things. Um, so if you have long tail inventory, so which mean, yeah, for example, a lot of different books uh, or a lot of different um, DNA items or part and accessory items, it could be very interesting if you have, if you know that you have people interested into your listing, but that are, they are not that many often on the looking at your listing to send offer to buyers to close the deal and remember that they were interested by this item. You can also increase the discount on multi-buy to clear stock quickly and use set event plus markdown even on a cumulated basis to reduce price on by, by periods of two weeks. And then at the end also, you can also think about best offer which is the tool that um, exists on eBay where you offer the buyer the possibility to start a negotiation on your item. Thank you. So could we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so um, we'll just um, uh, give you a few, few more um, about those tools and about the changes that are coming on, uh, on eBay during this period for the, the, the peak of on, online retail. Next slide, please. Thank you. So first, offer to buyers that I that I just um, that I just talked to, uh, talked to you about. So the great news is that we have started uh, last two weeks actually to add some automation to offer to buyers. And what that means, especially for you know new businesses or people starting uh, working on eBay, is that you can set up from the beginning an, an automated um, private offer that are sent to the new buyers that would be interested into your items. And every, every day they could receive those private offers that I was mentioning. You can stop them at any time, uh, again, by looking at Seller Hub Active Listing where everything is, uh, is there. Next slide, please. So another great, um, a, a great uh, 
innovation that we have launched, which will help buyers to identify item of value and will ha then help sellers to be identified as sellers providing great value. So in, uh, in August, in the search results, uh, we have launch a, a tag which is which is called great price as you can see and so now when looking at a search result on ebay you can see some of the listings being highlighted as great price um, and to get this back there is a few requirements the listing needs to be new uh, and matched to a product which means that it has been matched to a, a, a product in our ebay catalog to, that is to be sure that we are talking about the same item and that we we, we can review uh, which price is it and then it needs to be competitive across similar listing uh, on eBay for this product. The seller needs to be ETRS or above standard uh, for this for this batch to appear. So it's a it's a great way to actually identify great value, and it's a great way also for sellers to be rewarded for the great value that they are they are they are looking at. And we will be um, talking a bit more about this uh, next year as well. And so next slide, <laughs> which is about uh, shop. Uh, so I think you, you had you had a um, uh, discussion around shop, but the, the, one of the changes that are coming uh, this uh, this this um, actually next month is that we are we have launching relaunched um, eBay shops on mobile and especially within the app, and so the standard template that um, is the one that sellers can do without any customization is now available on uh, iOS and Android and will be also as a way to encourage everyone that have a shop on eBay to have a higher visibility and to drive traffic onto their item. And this is, um, this is coming uh, um, in at nearly at the end of the month, actually. So I think that's it. So I think next slide would be around, you know, just a summary and a wrap up. Um, so, you know, key drivers of value, as we can see, sellers, uh, buyers are expecting great items of great value on eBay, great prices uh, with a number of uh, promotions, uh, they expect a bargain. So promotions and price promotions are here to help you uh, to indicate those value uh, and to drive sales and velocity. We discussed about the importance of choosing the right promotion, review and optimize. It's also about the other things uh, that are related to value that we discussed, you know, being right about uh, what you are selling and the services that is around it. And lastly, yes, uh, time is of essence here. Um, it is now that you can start for the, the, the best time of the year normally, which is uh, the, the, the golden quarter, as uh, we said, that uh, starting actually next week. So thank you very much. <laughs> Great. Well, so thanks very much for that, Berenger. There's clearly a lot of different factors that businesses need to take into account in terms of offering value. Um, we, we've had some questions come in on the, the chat function. So the, the first question was actually um, about when selling low-cost items, um, they asked which is the best way to minimise fees or does it work out the same? For example, if an item costs one pound, um, uh, and the postage is one pound. Do you sort of list it as um, uh, price one pound plus postage one pound, or do you do item two pounds postage free? Um, my sense is probably it doesn't make a difference in terms of fees, but does it does it make a difference in terms of um, yep. uh, your perception? Um, yep. And can you comment on you know the uh, the way in which um, buyers view free postage as a um, yep. as a signal of val as a signal of value? Yeah. So uh, I think it is important to remember that actually buyers are looking for free postage. Um, there is so 70% of um, the transactions on eBay, UK, Germany and US are done with free postage. That includes IESP item, but that's include also very low ISP items. So it is, it is a fact that actually buyers will expect free shipping. So the recommendation would be always to actually be able to try to have uh, to 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 offer free shipping if it's possible. Now, it, in terms of the the uh, optimizing for fees, um, so shops is actually quite a, a, a first step into this direction because there is a, a, a number of allowance in session fees allowance, which means you know fees per listing um, that are included into into a basic shop and then if you need more into the other other tiers. And I think 
I think to, when, when starting on eBay, if, especially if you have a lot of uh, different items to list, maybe you want to consider a shop uh, to start with to actually remove this and optimize for, uh, for the cost and not having to think about, do I, do, I, do I really make, do I try with this one or do I try with this other one <laughs> um, in, a, in a way? Great, well, thank you for that. Um, there's a question here about multi-buy um, and a suggestion from, um, I guess, one of the participants that, um, there's an issue with multi-buy promotions perhaps not working um, on many international sites. Is that right? And, and also, um, mm -hmm. question: you know, how then are sellers um, supposed to kind of set um, pricing for um, multi-buy promotions if they don't appear on international sites um, without then yeah. them sort of showing an inflated pricing offering on, on those sites? Can you comment on that, please? So so the um, well promotions um the, the sell hub promotions the the, the, the promotion that we just discussed worked well and and, and they, they can be set up if you do active uh, cbt or if you actually go directly within the, the ebay site uh, that you are that you are listing so if for example you have um you have an item that is located in the uk but then you also have your listings on the on the french and, and italian site you can go to the French and Italian site to set up a multi-buy there. What doesn't work is that being, you know, using the UK site to uh, set up a promotion that will apply, appear on um, the French or the Italian site. So that's the um, that's that's the first thing. Uh, inflated uh, prices for um, for. If, if, well, when listening uh, or selling internationally, I, I, I think that it's, a, it's an interesting uh, question and interesting use case. Normally, the, the way that it works is that, um, and it depends also as the way that you are selling internationally. If you're selling internationally from the UK, which just giving visibility to the other, um, to the other country buyers, then normally it is the same item, but what is added on the top is the cost to ship there. Uh, especially if you're using a GSP, the global shipping program, for example, um, and that is that 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 will be the cost that actually the, the buyer will have to will have to pay uh, for that. So there is a number of of, of strategy there when this is starting to become a, a problem in terms of saying of looking at what are those uh, th those markets that you are selling the most with to look that alternative to uh, GSP if it that's uh, that's becoming a problem. Great, thank you. Um, and a, a question here from one of the kind of um, sellers that's considering kind of going on online. Um, how can they access Terapeak, um, and how, how much does that cost roughly? So um, Terapeak, in order to get pricing yeah, no, it's a very good question. Thank you, thank you very much. So Terapeak is a free tool if you have a shop subscription. So it's um, available to everybody that have a shop subscription as part of Seller Hub Research tab. So it used to be a paid for tool, uh, but it's not anymore. It's part of a, of a shop subscription. And everyone uh, using Seller Hub um, with, have, with a shop subscription uh, can actually access it through Seller Hub Research tab. Great. Well, so thanks for um, all the great tips and all the um, great advice, Baron Jure. And we're just going to take um, one final break um, and then we'll have our last two presentations. Um, firstly, on how to optimize your listings and then on shipping tips and tricks. So we'll see you um, back in 10 minutes. That's about 11.30. We'll see you again soon. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. So welcome back, everybody. Um, thanks for staying with us. Um, the good news is we're on the final stretch. Uh, and there's been lots of, kind of PowerPoint today, lots of presentations, and it's been a very long session. But thank you for sticking with us. Um, We've got our penultimate presentation now um, from uh, Victoria McCullough from our global customer experience team. We've heard um, about lots of different things today. Now we're going to hear about uh, how to optimise your listings. So over to you, Victoria. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So just to introduce myself a little bit, my name is Victoria, as you're aware. I work within the global customer experience team. My main role is a growth advisor for the UK market and I reside here in Dublin. Um, so today I'm going to be running through how to optimise your listings as this is one of the foundations of setting up your eBay account. Now just to scale it back a little bit before I kind of begin, um, just to clarify a listing, so you could say is your product. So anytime you hear any of us re relating to listings or anything like that, essentially it's just your product or your item being showcased on the eBay platform. So with that being said, we'll move on to the next slide. 
Perfect. Just a bit of an overview of what I will be running through today and the kind of key points you'll take away from it um, is essentially how to take great product photos because this is very, very important. It's essentially what's going to kind of help you showcase your product to customers and also allow them to hopefully purchase after viewing it. Um, I'll also run through how to price an item effectively because a lot of people are unsure about what to um, put the price as on our marketplace and they don't want to be doing too high, they don't want to be doing low, uh, too low. So this will kind of give you a bit of an idea of, of where to work with. And then the final one as well is just on creating a compelling listing. So as I said, optimizing it as a whole, making sure that it's being seen to potential customers and it's driving traffic. Um, so we'll just move on to the next slide. Perfect. So the first point being taking great product photos. So when you decide to list any of your items on eBay, we allow you to show 12 free photographs on your individual listing. So I can't stress it enough that it's important to utilize those 12 free photos when you can. Um, I think for certain items, there may be cases where there, you know, you're not going to be able to take 12 different angles of the same item. However, just do as many as you can because this really, really helps you out um, on the eBay best match. So just some tips regarding photos. So making sure that you're using a plain white backdrop so there is no distractions for any potential customers and they can see exactly what they're getting. Also make sure to turn off flash and if possible use a tripod, just it will allow you to have a steadier, more clear photo um, and use neutral lighting. So going back to the turning off the flash and the neutral lighting point, you want to make sure the photo you take and upload to your listing accurately shows what that color of the item is um, or what it looks like, the patterns, what it may look like in real life. You want to make sure it looks like that in the photo as well. Um, because if somebody, you know, if it looks slightly different in the photo, somebody receives the item, we don't want them to be disappointed um, at what they receive. So just making sure you keep it as accurate as you can. Um, very, very important as well to capture pictures that are visible both on the desktop and the eBay app because we have a high, high percentage of people shopping on the app at the moment through their mobile phone. And you'd be surprised that some photos may not look the same on an app than they do on the desktop. So what I'd suggest to do is upload your photos, check how they look on the desktop, and then pop onto your mobile phone very quickly just to make sure they look just as good so that um, customers on both platforms or kind of both devi devices get the same experience. Then we want to make sure as well that you guys uh, fill the frame with the item just to reduce cropping. So it just looks a lot more uh, professional that way. And then moving back to the 12 free image point, um, making sure that you're utilizing those with up close shots, uh, far away from the side, you know, as many angles as you can. And very important to note as well is if you're selling any items that do have blemishes or slight scratches or marks, take photos of them because we don't want any surprises when that customer opens up their package when they receive it. I know a lot of people may think, you know, they may hide, they want to hide any defects with the item because people may not purchase from them, but it's better to be upfront um, than to have people getting in contact with you with the being unhappy with the item they got and having to return it. So just making sure you take as many pictures as possible. So we just move on to the next slide. Thank you. And just some pro tips kind of relating back to the images. Uh, very, very important not to use watermarks on your pictures. So for this is for search engine optimization. So if the likes of Google, if you're searching for products, Google will not pull up a photograph that has a watermark on it. So do make sure to keep all watermarks off your products. It also distracts from what the item actually is as well. So it's not as a good buying experience for any customers if they can see a lot of watermarks or additional kind of logos or prints on the photo. So make sure to remove those. Also, you are welcome to list against the eBay catalog if you wish. So um, it was mentioned briefly before, but essentially when you go to list a product, in some cases, we allow you to list against our catalog, which essentially will pre-fill a lot of the information relating to your product for you. So it saves you time when creating a listing. So if possible, use that option. And then making sure as well that the first image on your listing is the item only. So a good example, if you even look to the right hand side there, the picture of this lovely lady with her, um, 
per four products, so the three handbags and a purse, you wouldn't want this particular picture to be the first item on your listing. Because if I was to look at that, I would have no idea what she's selling me. Is she selling me the four items? Is it just the one? You know, you want to make sure that it's clear, concise, and people know exactly what they're getting. So making sure the first image is the product only. So we'll just move on to the next slide. And some points on what makes a good listing. So first point being what we discussed already, the photographs, making sure they're high quality and as many as you can. Then you'll want to make sure that you categorize your item correctly. So this is very, very important because it's basically what is one of the factors that will determine if your product shows up for a potential buyer. So making sure that you um, put it in the correct category, the one most relevant to your item. There's no point putting an iPhone in the t-shirt category because it's not going to be found. So just being mindful of that. Then making sure you create an effective title. So this is one of the first things that a customer is going to look at when um, viewing your listing. So you want to make sure that you have all your important keywords in your title. So you're allowed 80 characters. So making sure you put everything that you can possibly fit in relating to the product, making sure, you know, brand name, the size, the pattern, description, whatever you are selling, whatever is relevant to that, making sure to include it. Also to note as well, a good little pointer is to use your most important keywords in the first four words of your title, because that's what a customer is going to see first. And also to be mindful as well that customers, many different customers search for multiple different things um, when looking for a product. So an example of this is if I was looking for a phone, I may use keywords relating to the model of the phone. Um, another individual may use keywords relating to the memory size. Other people may search based on the, um, the camera quality. So you kind of need to make sure you're um, using keywords that will facilitate every potential customer possible because not everybody types in the same thing in the search and um, so making sure that you include as many keywords as you can and um, will ensure that you appear for everybody that's looking for your item. Then very quickly just the item specifics and using product codes. This was also mentioned previously, but it is extremely, extremely important. Alongside your um, title and your photographs and everything like that being factors in if your item is going to appear for a customer, this is also very, very important. So item specifics are essentially little kind of keywords of information that are placed on the listing. So when a customer goes and searches for an item, and then decides to use the left hand side filters. I'm sure if you've been on eBay or any really platform, you can kind of filter down by specific things. So whether it be like price, free postage, you know, if it was a phone, maybe the memory size, the camera quality, etc. So if you do not have your item specifics filled in and someone then decides to filter down the left hand side of a search result, your item will automatically not appear if you don't have the, that information input into the listing. So it's extremely important to have those included because if you don't, you're missing out on a potential sale just by not having the information in. Then very quickly, just on the description aspect. So making sure that you put all the additional information in the description. So everything that a customer would need to know. And then very quickly on the returns, we've kind of discussed this previously, but if possible, offering free returns. Um, a lot of buyers expect kind of a generous returns policy. They want to know if something goes wrong that you'll help them out. And um, so making sure to, to offer that if possible. So just move on to the next slide. Thank you. So this is just kind of a bit of an overview of what we discussed a second ago, but just to give you a visual of what a good listing looks like. So this is an example, the photographs, as you can see, there's multiple different photos. The first one being the item itself, nice and up close on a white background. And um, so it looks really professional. Then the category. So this particular item is an air filter. And if you look very closely, it might be a little small for you guys, but the category it's in is the air filter category. So that's perfect. And um, the title as well is, you know, nice and long, has a lot of keywords in it. And uh, it's exactly what you'd want to see when popping onto a listing. Then if you just click to the next slide again, this will just change. 
Thank you. Um, so the description, this is kind of a screenshot of the description on that listing. And um, so as you can see, it looks really, really professional. Um, it, it's showing the photographs once again, so people can have a browse through again if needed. It's showing the title. Below that, it has all the additional information about the product. And then you'll notice to the left hand side as well, there's also additional categories there. So people, if, um, if a customer decides to go onto this listing, Maybe it's not for them and not exactly what they're wanting. They can browse through your uh, the your other categories as well. So it could potentially lead to a sale of another item. And then very quickly on uh, the returns, as I said, making sure you're offering free returns where possible and then photographing the item from as many angles as you can. So we'll pop on to the next slide. And very quickly, this is just a, a cool little feature we have on the eBay mobile app. So we actually allow you to list your products either via desktop or via app, whichever suits you. Um, and a cool little feature on the app is when you decide to take a photograph of the item, we have a feature that will actually allow you to crop out the background and place your item on a plain white background. Um, so it saves you having to mess around with any Photoshop on your computer or anything like that. We'll allow you to do it on the app itself. So you can see the four steps there. First one, you just need to take a photo of the item. As you can see, there's a lot of background mess there, a bit distracting. The second one will allow you to kind of um, erase everything that's in the background and place that white backdrop. The third option will allow you to kind of crop, you know, erase, brush or pinch or whatever else you need to do to make that item look as good as possible. And then the fourth there, you can see the finished item compared to the first. So it looks a lot more professional, no background mess, and, you, and the customers can see exactly what they're getting. So do utilize that if you can. And we'll pop on to the next slide. Perfect. So just regarding um, pricing an item. So there's two different types of listings you can put up on uh, eBay. First one being fixed price, probably the one you guys are going to be dealing with the most, but essentially this will allow you to put your item on site as a fixed price. And if someone is looking to buy, they have to pay that set amount. And um, it's great to do if you have a lot of inventory or you have multiple different items that you group into one listing. Prime example, if you have a t-shirt in many different sizes or colors, you can put them all into one fixed price listing and provide a drop down for the customer to choose which one they'd like. So fixed price is probably the one you use the most. However, we do have an option for auction listings. So this is useful if you are unaware or unsure of what your um, item is worth and would like the marketplace to kind of determine it for you. It's great for items that are maybe hard to find, unique, you know, in demand. And then also as well for items that possibly fluctuate due to seasonality or popularity, uh, an auction, auction may be useful. And just very quickly then, if you do decide to use an auction, um, there's an option to set a reserve price. So essentially this means in the background, you can kind of set up in the system that you will not uh, allow this auction to kind of complete um, for below a certain amount. So you're not really going to be losing out on money. Um, so do utilize that if you can. And then also there's a buy it now price as well you can put on an auction. So the auction could be taken away, but you could also have a little section there where if someone wants to come in straight away and just buy it for £50, it will allow them to do that and they don't have to wait for the auction to end. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Perfect. So just back on the pricing guidance aspect. So the best way to determine what to place your item as uh, price wise is just looking at what your competitors are doing on the site at the moment. So if there's anybody selling something similar to you, go have a look and see what they're pricing it as. Um, a good little feature as well is you can actually go onto the eBay platform and search for sold items relating to your product. So you can see what customers quite recently are willing to pay for that item. And then you can kind of make a decision from there. Um, then as well, just making sure that you uh, you know, price as competitively as possible. You don't want it, you know, really, really expensive uh, miles above what your competitors are doing because the chances of making a sale are probably slim because price is kind of one of the big things people look at. And then also making sure to take into consideration that people also look at the price of postage, which was mentioned before. So if possible, implementing the postage cost maybe into your item price and offering free postage or just making sure the postage is as low as it can be. Um, because that will determine if someone buys from you. Um, that point there on the setting a reserve price. So I mentioned already, if you have an auction, it will allow you to set an amount that you are not um, willing to go below. 
and then as well the eBay catalog which I mentioned just to list against that if you can. So we'll just move on very quickly. Perfect. So the returns um, feature, so we've kind of discussed it um, already, but just making sure that you're offering a nice generous returns policy as it is required under UK law. So the more generous the returns policy, the more likely people are to purchase from you because they know, as I said, if something is to go wrong, if the T-shirt doesn't fit, if they need to exchange, they can get onto you straight away. Um, you're given options of 14, 30 or 60 day returns. Ideally, you want to be doing 60. Um, I know that seems like a long time, but the fact you put it up to 60 doesn't actually increase the likelihood you'll get a return. And um, most people do returns within the first seven days. Um, so, you know, the, the higher you give your returns policy, you're not going to be getting more returns due to that. It just means people are more confident in your business. And there's also an option to manually uh, approve return requests. So it saves you having to go in and accept each one as they come through. So you will have the option to do that. And then as well, very, very important, the best approach to returns is just to avoid them altogether. So this can be avoided by writing accurate descriptions, making sure your photographs you know, are showing the item as it looks like, um, making sure that the listing is just overall optimized because then there'll be no surprises when the people open up their package in a couple of days and there'll be no need for them to get onto you to return or anything like that. Um, perfect, so we'll just move on. Great, so I have another um, little section here after this, but I'll stop right now just to see if we have any questions regarding listings. Sure, thanks very much, Victoria. That's um, really helpful. So I just have one question here, which was, um, uh, in, in terms of optimizing listings, um, what is the, the most important aspect? Is it imaging? Is it pricing? Is it returns? Just all of these? Are there any pitfalls to avoid? Uh, and actually, so there was one other question which came in um, around, I don't know if it's a, a fair question for you, but it's around best match. And can you say a little bit more about how best match works so that people understand a little bit more as to um, how their listings are allowed to be displayed, the kind of default search options which are there, and how to kind of get the best out of best match as well? Yeah, of course. Well, those two questions kind of tie in together. So essentially, it's a number of different things that our algorithm and best match is going to look at. When creating a listing, you want to be focusing on the likes of the title, the price, the photos, um, your postage returns, and specifically the item specifics as well. And essentially, those little kind of things are what our algorithm or search results is going to kind of look at when deciding what products to show to potential customers. So you just want to make sure they're all filled in to the best of your ability and, you know, everything else will kind of follow from that. And um, so it's just making sure, sure, pardon me, you're hitting all those uh, key points and then our algorithm will be able to pick up on those and we'll show your product then to our customers. Great. Thanks very much for that. So I think you're sure. going to talk to us now about promoted listings. Is that right? Yes, I'll run through it very quickly. So if you want to pop That's on. It. Perfect. So very, very quickly, promoted listings is another little promotional tool that you guys will have access to. You will get access to this particular tool once you've kind of built up a little bit of a sales history and uh, start kind of having some activity on site, paying your invoices, etc. We will allow you to use this tool. And essentially promoted listings allows you to sponsor your products across the eBay platform. So I'll just move on to the next slide. Thank you. So promoted listings allows you to get your items noticed. So it's available to all store subscribers and promoted listings will allow you to sponsor your um, eBay products or listings across the platform in up to 50 different places. And this will allow you to get an increase of visibility and it can go up to 30% um, and can also increase the likelihood of a sale. So these sponsored advertisements will basically be shown across the platform and um, to build kind of brand awareness, give you more visibility. It can benefit you within the search results. It can uh, benefit you within the placement in those search results. It can start showing your product, you know, across the kind of the buying flow. And um, I'll show you some examples of where these sponsored ads can appear. But essentially, it's it's just trying to push your product in front of customers a little bit more. The way it works is you would sponsor your product. If that sponsored item sells, you would pay an extra percentage to us. Um, however, the great thing about this tool is the uh, percentage that you pay is completed, completely determined by yourselves. 
So unlike a lot of our competitors kind of sponsored ads tools, this one is on the basis of a pay per sale. So unless you actually make a sale, you don't pay anything. Um, whereas a lot of other people work on a play per click model, meaning you pay for clicks that you're getting on your product. Whereas we don't want that. We only want you to be paying if you're actually benefiting from it. Um, so this is a really good tool to use to kind of build up a bit of visibility for you guys. The benefits include it's quick and easy to set up. So essentially everything is set up within three steps. You've got to pick your listings. You pick the percentage you'd like to pay and we'll um, then you kind of just pick the start and end date and we'll take care of the rest. We'll just sponsor your ads from there. Bear in mind, the percentage that you do pay can determine and can have some impact on where your sponsored ads appear. So what I'd suggest to do if you are using this tool, we have something called the suggested ad rate, which essentially will give you an average percentage or a recommended percentage that you guys would uh, be able to pay that would give you the best kind of results on this tool. So do make sure just to kind of have a look at that when you're setting it up. Um, another point is you're able to stay in control. So on the aspect of kind of the percentages that you're paying, as I said, you determine what you pay. And um, so you can pay, you know, 1%, you can pay 100%. Um, not that you want to be given 100% away, but the option is there. Um, and you can stop the campaign. You can end your sponsored ads. You can add new listings. You can adjust percentages as you wish. So um, it's really, really flexible. Then we also have a full reporting kind of um, tool there. So we have a dashboard available in your seller hub, which I'll show in a moment how to get to. And it basically allows you to keep up to date on the impressions you're receiving, how much you're spending, how much you're selling, all those good little bit pieces of information. And it also allows you to download into reports into Excel should you need it. And then obviously, as I mentioned, the clear billing aspect. So you get to decide the percentage you pay. We will show you that amount up front before you even start the campaign. And um, you only actually pay if you sell the product. So if your sponsored ad is there and it's receiving clicks but no sales, you don't receive, um, we don't charge you anything. However, it does benefit you because you're receiving all those clicks and impressions. And um, so even if you're not paying for the tool, you're still getting some additional visibility in that regard. So we'll just move on to the next slide. Perfect. So very quickly, when to use promoted listings. Um, if you've had a bit of a drop in sales, it's good to use just to kind of build yourself back up. If you've recently, so kind of touching on um, what James discussed, if you've recently been put down to below standard. Um, so when you're below standard, unfortunately, you do not have access to this tool. However, once you kind of build your way back up out of below standard, this is a great tool to kind of use to kind of get the momentum going again and get yourself up to above standard or top rated. Uh, the third point is just as I mentioned there. The fourth one being business growth. So for you guys, if you've new accounts, this is great to kind of get things going, get the ball rolling, get some visibility. Um, also launching new product lines. So the new listings you have may not have a sales history behind it. So to kind of build that up is very useful. And um, if you need to sell through excess stock, and then also in conjunction with a sale event or promotion. So touching on what Baron Jair mentioned, if you use this particular tool, you'll be guaranteed additional impressions. And um, the other promotional tools may kind of push um, higher conversion. So the two kind of put together is a match made in heaven and you'd be guaranteed some good results. And um, very quickly as well, I'll just mention if you do have a store subscription and um, if you've a featured store, you actually do get a 10 pen credit you can put towards this tool. Or if you've an anchored store, you get a 20 pen credit. So just in case you do have those stores, be mindful you can put those credits towards it. Just move on very quickly. Perfect. So this is just a little bit of a screenshot of where you can access it. So very, very easy. You pop into your seller hub, you hover over your marketing tab up the top of the page, and it's the fourth option down, and you'll be brought straight through through your uh, promoted listings dashboard to either view any reports or either set uh, a sponsored campaign up. So I'll just move on. Perfect. So um, I'm not sure if guys can see this clearly, but this is just some examples of where your sponsored ads may appear. So the first one being the search results. So as you can see, this is just a little bit of a screenshot of a search result. And um, so this is what customers are going to see when they're typing in keywords or searching for products they want to buy. And within that, your sponsored ad can appear. So what it will look like is the it will show your listing, but just above it, there will be a little sponsored tab to kind of indicate to a potential customer that eBay are sponsoring this product. 
Over to the right then, there's an option of the sponsored ad appearing on the view item page. So as you can see there, this is what a listing would look like. But just below, you can see we're shown kind of a list of additional products of six additional products. Some of them can actually be sponsored ads. So if somebody is on a competitor's listing, we could possibly show one of your sponsored ads to try and drive traffic towards your store. I'll just move on to the next slide. Perfect. And very lastly, um, then the My eBay option. So we could show your sponsored ads within a buyer's My eBay section. So when they log into their account and they're looking you know, just generally through their account, maybe in their purchase history or they're looking at their watch list, we can push your sponsored ads in front of them. And then also lastly as well, the checkout option. So this is one of the great ones. If you, uh, if a customer is just purchasing an item, we may show sponsored ads just below um, to try and kind of push them to maybe add a few more to basket or to purchase some additional products. Um, so I think that is it for me. Any questions on promoted listings? No, that's great. Thanks very much, uh, Victoria. That's really, really helpful. Um, no questions um, that we've had come in on promoted listings. Um, so um, thank you for that. Um, this, I guess, leads us to our final presentation for today, which is from uh, Josh McWilliams in our shipping team. So you've listed the item, uh, you've sold it, uh, but now, of course, you have to ship it. What's the best way to do this? What are the key tips and tricks uh, to go about? Josh is about to tell you all about that right now. Over to you, Josh. Oh, brilliant. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Yes, perfect. All right. Hi, everyone. So my name is Josh McWilliam. So I work in the retail standards team and we look after shipping and logistics. Um, and I know oh, I just lost the presentation there. Sorry, right. Annie, can you put that back on? Yeah, sorry. Just bear with us, Josh. Sorry, right. it's all right. I can, I can intro. Sorry, I, I thought something wrong with my Zoom then. Um, but I know you've heard a lot today about how you optimise your listings, how you get best value, um, but you ultimately don't want to undo that at the very end by disappointing buyers with shipping and logistics. So this is why it's really critical on eBay to get that right. If you could get to the slide, please, Annie. I can see power up your sales online. There, you go. there we go. There we go. Perfect. If you go to the next slide, please. So today I'm going to take you through five things to help you with your shipping. So the first one is fast and free and what that means on eBay. The next one is convenience and how you offer buyers convenience through next day or click and collect. The next one is tracking and the important role that plays for building trust with buyers. The fourth one is returns. I know alluded to previously, but how you make that really simple to manage and really hassle-free for buyers and yourselves. And the last one is international delivery and how we can help access new markets really simply and easily. The next slide, please, um, is so why are we doing it? So why are we focusing on shipping logistics? So there's lots of key metrics here, but I'll just kind of point out the key ones. So the first one is, is that 68% of buyers um, UK shoppers believe a good delivery experience would encourage them to shop again. But it's really important to get it right. The next one is convenient. So one in two, 49%, would pay for a better service if that's, if that's available. So it's making sure that you charge the buyer for the next day, for example, and really get it right. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, so the other things that are really important is trust and tracking and returns. And I think trust here is the one that really stands out. So 96% of buyers will shop with a retailer after a positive delivery experience. So as I mentioned before, you've done all that great work, you've optimised your listings, you've got the right price, but then you burn them on that delivery or returns process, it means they're unlikely to buy from you again. So we really need to make sure we get this right. Next slide, please. So I'm going to kind of explain to you how you set up those postage and returns option easily on eBay, um, and we'll go through that now. So you need to really need to make sure you maximize your delivery options. So you need to make sure you offer them choice. You need to make sure it's attractive with fast and free. You increase conversion by uh, amending your dispatch time. So that's the amount of time that you, you take to then land into the carrier network. You need to make sure you add tracking. And then lastly, but not least, is how you kind of manage those returns. 
So this is a great example of a listing of how you can offer buyer a choice. So here's an iPhone and they go to buy it. And here I've got three clear options. I can get it in two days. I can get it in one day or I can even get it on special delivery. But the important thing here is that you're charging the buyer for that option so that you aren't ultimately eroding on your margin. So firstly, offer them free, but you can also offer them the next day options and charge it to them. And then they will be prepared to pay for that. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see a great example of how shipping plays a key role all the way from when they start their journey on eBay. So when they go to search an item or they go to filter, they can also filter on delivery options. So they can filter on if they want something next day. So for example, if I wanted to buy an iPhone, mine's damaged and I want it next day, I can then make sure I filter on that on your item. So how do you manage it on eBay? It's really straightforward. So something that you can use on eBay is something that you call policies. And this is how you save your postage payment and returns option on a blanket. So you don't have to individually amend it on each listing. So you can set them up really easily and simply straightforward. So you can offer multiple policies, multiple options based on your category. So you might want to offer a different return policy on a furniture item versus a fashion item. Or you might want to offer a different shipping option for something that's domestic versus international. And you can manage that within your My eBay and it's really straightforward to do. The next slide. So I mentioned it before, is how can you look at amending your dispatch time? So dispatch time plays a really critical role on eBay because we estimate how long an item will arrive at a buyer using this. And your dispatch time is the amount of time it takes for you to handle that and either give it to the post office or hand it to your carrier. If you go to the next slide, I'll kind of go through what that means. So like I said, it's the number of business days between you receiving your payment and when you hand it or scan it into your carrier network. As dispatch time determines when we tell the buyer they'll receive their item. So if you dispatch it in one day and use a career service that takes two, we tell the buyer it takes three days. And therefore, ultimately, you need to make sure you get that dispatch time correct. And you need to make sure it reflects your operations, especially during these times such as COVID, where it might affect it. Make sure you amend your dispatch time to reflect what you can actually manage and do. Now, in terms of why dispatch time matters, so it's really important that you meet or beat your dispatch time. So if you're adding one day, try and do it faster than that. If you offer one day or same day options, it will attract more buyers because your item will arrive quicker. We know that drives conversion. And you can also improve your chances to get the fast and free badge or logo, and which I'll show a bit later on. And then you can also ensure you have multiple shipping options onto that listing as well. So if you dispatch it within zero day, you can offer next day. So I've spoken about it. So the fast and free badge uh, is really important on eBay and I'll show you what it looks like now. You've probably been seeing it before. So it's a really powerful tool that increases sales. It's basically a logo that will appear on key pages such as search results and view item page. And it's known to increase conversion by 3%. Uh, and this is where an item will be free delivery and it arrives within three days. So you need to make sure your dispatch and your carrier time is three days or less to get that badge. If you go to the next slide. So here's a great example of what it looks like. As you can see, there's a Samsung Galaxy S7. You can see it really stands out versus the other item. And then when you click on the item to view it, it will clearly show it's fast and free and it will show when the estimated delivery time is. And as I said, buyers want items fast and they want them free. So we've done fast and free. The next thing is click and collect. And this is really increasing buyer convenience. If you go to the next slide, I'll kind of explain what that means. So it's a really convenient way for buyers to receive parcels so they can collect near their work or home. Obviously, currently it's not necessarily the case, um, but when hopefully things go back to normal, it's a really great way to drive convenience because it reduces the hassle and the inconvenience of them missing the delivery because the item will arrive at a location that we've got. And if you go to the next slide, I'll explain how many locations we have. So click and collect. We have 3,500 click and collect locations, and that's across Argos, Sainsbury's, and Collect Plus. And Collect Plus is amazing news, news agents. And we're normally about a mile within a buyer, so it's really powerful for them. It, it offers you a really great protection as well on your item, and I'll explain in a minute what that means. And as a seller, you don't need to do anything extra. 
all you need to do is click that you offer click and collect and we manage the rest so in terms of you as a seller it's really important to remember that your item will, when it's checked in store and it's tracked we know where it is and in the likely event that the item is lost by the store we protect the buyer and we refund them immediately and it's no extra cost to you uh, one thing to note is that you need to make sure you keep a note of your unique identifier which is available on the label so that if this does happen you're protected but i think it's really important to remember that it gives buyers convenience gives you another conversion lever uh, and it protects you as well at the same time go to the next slide so the next one is is tracking um and really important that we provide that for trust you go to the next slide so as i mentioned before it's really important that buyers can shop with peace of mind. So 82% say it's important when a retailer communicates a tracking status. Basically, as a buyer, they want to know where it is in the journey, when it will arrive. Uh, so it protects, and also it protects you as well. So in the unfortunate case that your item arrives late and you've got the tracking information, we will also protect you. So in terms of the tracking status, is it also, um, integrates really nicely with the eBay platform. Um, all carrier statuses are, well, for certain carriers are integrated with eBay. So therefore there's no need for the buyer to go onto the carrier such as Raw Mail website to check it. It's all integrated on the eBay app. All they need to do is check where their item is and it clearly shows where it is. That's a really consistent, clean experience for buyers. So the next one is returns. Um, and again, returns is really important on eBay. Return rate on eBay is about 2.5%. So it's less than normal e-commerce, but it still plays a really important role for buyers and you as well as sellers. So why returns important? I think we've kind of opened up to these data points already, but 74% consider a good return service really important when they shop on eBay. So they check it even before they look to buy the item, they will check that return policy. And it also doesn't matter what the demographic is or where it is in, in the kind of country or world, returns plays a really important role for that. So as I said, buyers can comfortably shop um, if they know that you accept returns, even though most buyers will never actually return the item because the return rate is low. And like it's alluded to, if your listing's right and you've appeased it, then it's fine. But in the unfortunate case that someone might want to return, or maybe it's a they want doesn't fit them or something like that. You need to make sure you really generous with your return policy, make it really simple to do that. Uh, and if you want to be part of our eBay premium service, which gives you a discount on listing fees, um, you, you need to offer 30 day returns. So as the seller, how do you manage that? So this is a broken down, simplified, simplified flow. So if a buyer wants to return an item, they have to firstly request it. You as the seller, you can either manually accept the return or you can set up some automation rules. So for example, certain price tranches and a reason. So if it's damaged and under 10 pound, you'll automatically accept it. So it takes the hassle away from that. Once the item is then returned, you then check it and then you can then issue the refund in my eBay. Now there are lots of ways in which you can manage it as well. You can automate this. You can also offer a partial refund and you can also reject it. But the important thing here is that we try and take the hassle out of it for the buyer and try and simplify it for you, the seller. Cool. Uh, so the, the fifth one today I'm going to talk to you about is international trade and access to a really great program which should help make it even easier, especially with Brexit on the horizon. We've got a hub that helps manage that much easier and quicker for you. So in terms of sellers on eBay, so 90% of UK sellers have actually exported an item on eBay. And it's a really clearly shows that 16% average increase in sales volume because we get access to over hundred countries because of where the eBay is. Fashion and tech are actually some of the strongest categories for international sales. Uh, and lastly, the global shipping program allows you to send them really simply. Um, it's basically as simple as a UK or domestic sale. All you have to do is send it to our hub and we manage the fees and the shipping costs as well. And if you go to the next slide, please. As I mentioned, it's as simple as a UK um, UK sale. We have to do is send it to the warehouse and I'll send, show you a little bit of a 
video now to give you a bit of a view of what that GSP hub can do. So if you go to the next slide, I and mean, hopefully this video will play for you. Can't hear the volume. Internationally, okay, it's easy for selling Thank within you. the UK. She'd like to increase her sales. The Global Shipping Programme is an easy way for businesses and private sellers to reach millions more buyers. It makes selling internationally as easy as selling within the UK. Meet Sarah. She loves gadgets and sells them on eBay. She'd like to increase her sales by selling to more buyers internationally, but hasn't done it before. She always thought that it would be too complicated. But with the Global Shipping Program, Sarah doesn't need to worry because it's all taken care of for her. Here's how it works. Sarah enrolls for free into the Global Shipping Program. International postage charges and any applicable customs charges are automatically shown on Sarah's listings and paid in advance by her buyers. Sarah only pays for postage costs to the UK Shipping Centre, where her parcel is processed for international delivery. Every time Sarah sells an item internationally, she posts it to the UK Shipping Centre using her usual postage service. The address is automatically provided as the post to address for the order. The address includes a unique identifier code. This is so that the UK Shipping Centre can identify her item. She must always include this code on her postage label. Sarah's final value fee is based on her item price plus her domestic postage fee only. And when she follows postage best practices, she can get five stars for dispatch time and five stars for postage and handling charges. Once the item is received in the UK Shipping Centre, more seller protections are built in. If the item gets lost or damaged in international transit, any resulting negative or neutral feedback left by Sarah's buyer will be removed. Once Sarah's item arrives at the UK Shipping Centre, the parcel is processed, any customs forms are completed and prepaid custom charges are remitted. It's then sent through customs and quickly delivered to her buyer via a fully tracked international postage service giving both her and her buyer peace of mind. It's simple. What's more, it's customizable. So if only some of Sarah's items are suitable for international buyers, she can change her settings to choose which items she wants to post through the global shipping program. She can also exclude any countries she doesn't want to sell to. You may already be signed up. You can check under selling preferences in my eBay. If you haven't yet, the global shipping program is an easy way to get started. Brilliant. So just as a quick recap, so the global shipping program gives you access to 88 markets. That's actually increased over the last few weeks to over 100. Um, we pay the import, you, the import charges are all paid up front so the buyer isn't burnt and therefore doesn't cause you an issue. And last but not least, it's fully tracked service so the buyer can fully see where it is as well as you, the seller. And the last thing I'll show you on the GSP hub is just how it shows for a buyer. So this is an example of an item. You can clearly see here the costs are shown up front to the buyer and they pay them, not you. Um, and it's really straightforward and easy. And the last thing just to mention is that we are Brexit ready. So the GSP hub will manage all the complications that come with Brexit. Cool. The last thing I'm going to show, a bit of a bonus. Um, so I said I'd show five things. This is the last thing I'll show. It's just another thing in which you can delight buyers and that's through our eBay branded packaging go to the last slide please so um this is how the item will arrive it's really important that it will drive repeat purchases we've got really high quality ebay branded packaging um it's you get boxes you get poly mailers bubble mailers as well and you also have a variety of different colors and it's 100 percent recyclable uh, and when you sign up for a new store so as you guys are new or new sellers and um, you get 20 pound coupon off your first pay as well so definitely use this because it delights buyers so let me just recap before I go through uh, kind of any questions. So six things to remember when you're kind of looking to do shipping and logistics on eBay. Offer fast and free badge. So that's free delivery in three days. Offer them choice. So click and collect and a payable next day option. Um, add tracking. So it builds trust with the buyer. They know where the item is. Um, manage your returns so the buyer can easily do it. Offer international delivery and use that GSP program. Like I said, it's really simple. It's as simple as a UK delivery and all you have to do is tick a box. And the last thing is 
use eBay branded packaging where you can because it delights them. And that's it from me. If there's any questions? Great. Yeah, no, thank you very much, Josh. That's been um, really helpful. And we have had a couple of questions in from our attendees. Um, the, uh, the first is uh, around uh, how can you make sure you estimate the shipping price correctly when listing, especially if you might have lots of different potential destinations, uh, either within the UK or um, maybe internationally. Um, any advice there? Yeah, yeah. So um, eBay, we have a rate table, so we should be able to do that for you. Um, when you set up your listing domestically, Royal Mail, Hermes will normally have the same price for that label. Internationally, take advantage of that GSP hub because we manage the complications of the different rates for you. Great, thank you. Um, final question was around um, click and collect. Um, I guess from a, a drop-off perspective, you, you've talked about it from um, the, the buyer perspective, but um, from a seller perspective, uh, is click and collect still available um, during lockdown for things like Collect Plus? Um, have there been any issues uh, around shipping during the current crisis, um, either in terms of delays or you know, getting things to, to the post office? Can you comment on that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one of the things that my team, the team I work in is actively manage any delays that happen during COVID. So let me tackle the first one in terms of click and collect, and then I'll mention a bit more about how we manage COVID. Um, sure. So first thing, click and collect stores. So as you can man manage, Argos and Sun Sainsbury stores have been shutting. Actually, Collect Plus remained open because they're classed as essential stores. Um, so we have a team that manages that actively. So we're constantly uh, managing any stores that open and close. And then in terms of COVID, um, obviously we had a lot of disruption and therefore that has affected the carrier networks. So as a UK business, we've really worked really closely with key carriers such as Royal Mail, Hermes and others to make sure that we protect the sellers. So we have done, um, we have added delivery days where possible. We've added delivery days on certain carrier services. And we've very much worked based on what carriers have told us in terms of the impact it's had, as well as looking at the data that we see from sellers, because some sellers are affected more than others. But we rest assured we're actively managing it. And the last thing on the COVID is actually, if you were to Google uh, eBay seller center COVID, we actually have a COVID page, which will update not just delivery, but all the different changes that happen related to into COVID. And one of them is delivery and how we manage it. Fantastic. That's really helpful advice. So listen, that um, concludes uh, all of today's presentations and concludes today's webinar. Uh, I just wanted to finish by saying thank you to all of our presenters uh, today, as well as our special guests, Rob Patrell and uh, the Minister of State for Culture and Digital, um, Caroline Dynage. Uh, I'd like, if I may, also take this opportunity to thank um, not only the Minister's Office, but also Ian Bridges at Gosport Council, Richard Jones at uh, Solent LEP, as well as Business South and uh, a number of councils, including um, New Forest, East Hampshire, Havant and Southampton councils for their help in organising uh, today's event. Uh, just a reminder that uh, today's webinar will be posted online. We'll follow up uh, with the, the link once it's uh, live uh, via email. Rob, um, as you may remember, mentioned uh, earlier on an initiative which we have launched called Pay As You Grow. Uh, we will put in some details for that uh, in our email to you about the, the webinar so you can also uh, benefit from that if you are a, a new business uh, setting up uh, on eBay. I hope that today's webinar has um, provided you with you know, lots of useful tips and uh, tricks. I hope it's uh, encouraged those of you who haven't maybe made the move online uh, yet uh, to do so. I hope it will inspire you to go digital. Um, for those of you who are maybe already selling uh, through your website or elsewhere, I hope it will um, I've given you a sense as to some of the opportunities which are available through online marketplaces. Um, but most of all, I just wanted to conclude by saying that you're know, given the very challenging uh, times facing our economy uh, and our country, I just want to wish all of you the very best uh, for your businesses uh, and the families that you support in the weeks and months ahead. So thank you all uh, for attending and have a great day.